so plenty of goals. But we were once in the top division, now we're in the third division. So hopefully one day again we can we can rise and and start winning things. <laughs> I was reading up on you because you know I do my my homework and I prepare and it. Portsmouth is a town where they take pride from being from Portsmouth. Mm. It's, it's a hard-nosed town. It's a blue-collar town. But Michael McKinson being there representing for that town, you're a big deal just like the professional team, and you bring a lot of pride to that. How does that make you feel? Very proud to be flying the flag for Portsmouth and, and shining a light. Um, it's only going to help the city and help the next generation and stuff like that, so I'm very proud. Um, I've got a lot of support back home, um, you know, but winning this, like, I'll never have to buy a drink in Portsmouth <laughs> again. <laughs> I don't think you have to anyways. No, this is... Because uh, you is put them on the map here across sure. the United States. This is huge uh, for, this, for my city. This is huge for British boxing, really. Um, winning this could be huge, so, yeah. When you fought in March at USC and you fought mm. Alex Martin, who was a last-minute replacement because Virgil uh, fell ill, you know, the British coverage was big for you yeah. and just the media that showed up. I remember posting on my Instagram, all, like all these new followers, people trying to get information about you. That's great. Like, this is not what you dream of, like the media following oh. you, but knowing that recognition, right, from where you came from. Yeah, it's a dream come true. Um, it hasn't always been like that. Like I've gained a lot of support because of the moves I'm making in boxing, taking big risks and taking gambles and obviously succeeding that way. Um, of I've obviously gained a lot of support over the years, uh, and yeah, it's like it's, I'm a big deal for my city, but I want to be a big deal for my country, you know, big deal in the world. You said at the press conference that there was a f early on in your career you got a fight, you fought, and there was no money. My first ten professional fights, I didn't earn a penny. Like I mean, you're well, supposed I think, to. No, I think it was like a, a combined of my first ten professional fights, I probably got less than a thousand pound money for my first ten. Uh, fights and yeah, it was it was hard times early on. Half, half where were you fighting? Like in the on the farm somewhere? Oh yeah, Nobody was there. I wasn't very popular back then. I was I was young, um, and I used to have to like str I struggled to sell tickets to do four round fights early on in my career, and that's why when I got to the stage of total fights, I had to take gambles, um, and that's the reason. Slowly but surely, I've gained a a big fan base over in the UK. You know, I've had to do it the hard way. What is it about UK fighters that right now there's been a, a big surge and just the growth of it? What is it about the UK fighters that just coming up lately? Um, I think British boxing's fr thriving at the moment. There's a, there's a couple of great platforms yeah. over in the UK. Obviously, I'm with, I'm with Matt Troom and Eddie Hearn. Uh, they've done good things for me over the last 12 months. So... So yeah, I think British boxing's thriving. There's a lot of power over in Britain at the moment, and and yeah, it's only gonna it's only gonna get better. Now, this is me, dumb American here. Where, how far is London from where you're at? Because that's all I know. Uh, on a good day or a bad day, it's probably about an hour and a half, two okay. hours. Yeah. So we're south of we're south of London. We're along the the south coast on the beach. And is that the goal of a British fighter to fight in London? No, I've fought in London many times. Okay. A goal for a British fighter is to go and headline the States. Really? Head headline a show in the States. That's a goal of mine. Obviously, I'd love to fight in uh, my, my football ground, my Portsmouth football ground. I'd love to do that. Uh, but I think most people, when, they, when they're young and they turn pro, they'd love to go and conquer the States. Really? You know? Yeah. Say attitude. Um, Las Vegas? Yeah. That's what so is. in Las Vegas would be, would be a dream. But, you know, like in March, I... Um, I became the first Portsmouth professional to fight in the States ever. Um, now I'll get to do it again, but I'll get to headline on a Golden Boy show. So, yeah, this is big. This is why we love doing Golden Boy Insider. You find something <laughs> new about a fighter every single time. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page. interview instead of how do you feel how was camp how's everything else going we get to know these guys and a lot of things that we learned about michael mckinson pretty cool guy yeah pretty cool guy you can tell he's coming here to fight he has that that 
fighter mentality. He'll come and stare you in the face off for a minute like he did with Virgil. So very humble guy. All right, thank you for joining us wherever you may be. If you're in L.A., if you're here in Texas, or if you're in Miami, or if you're in Portsmouth, uh, wherever you may be around the world. If you're in Australia, I think somebody tweeted me they're watching in Australia. Thank you very much. We're about 15 minutes away from our first fight walking. Beth Duran alongside Golden Boy prospect Alex Rincon, 10 and 0, 7 KOs. We're going to be on the undercard broadcast for you. So what's going to happen? Well, of course, Virgil Ortiz is the main event. He's taking on Michael McKinson. But before that, the co-feature is going to be Marlena Sparza taking on Maracay Venezuela's uh, Eva Guzman, who's 19-1. That's for the WBA, WBC, and ring flyweight titles. And you know Marlene, 2012 Olympian. She loves fighting in Texas. She loves going and fighting anywhere you can. But she said it yesterday after the weigh-in that she wants to unify that division. Love her attitude. Love her attitude. She's here to fight. She's not afraid of anybody. Marlene is being from Houston. She has a good big fan base here in Texas, and uh, she's ready to fight. She's ready to come in and get some more titles, defend her titles as well. All right, so it'll be the co-feature tonight. Let me give you the traffic of what's going on here at Golden Boy in Fort Worth, Texas. So at 8 o'clock Central Time, so I guess that's 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific, uh, you're going to have the, the Zone broadcast. This with Todd Grisham, Sergio Mora, and Chris Mannix. Opening up the broadcast will be Bektermir Melikuziev from the U you, uh, Uzbekistan, now training with Joel Diaz and Coachella. He takes on Sladan Yanyanin from Serbia, now training in Boston. And if you want to see something funny, it happened to me yesterday after the way uh, where Milikuziev, they call him Beck the Bully, uh, his only loss came a big knockout when Gabriel Rosado knocked him out, a big you know, uh, prospect for Golden Boy. He's learning a little bit of Espanol, but you know this, when you're in a, in a gym, Alex, yeah. the Espanol taught isn't stuff for broadcast. Yeah. So yesterday he said viva, and then he said a curse word in Spanish. And <laughs> so go ahead and check it out uh, on my social media, Beth Duran. And he, he was fun about it, so it was yeah. cool. But it was a good one. It, it, a good it's one. a good one. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's one of those where you're the interview, you're like, okay, you got me. Even yeah, though I told yeah. him, hey, don't say that. He kind of gave that little <laughs> win. But Beck is a yeah. fighter where he comes to knock you out, doesn't he? Oh, this guy, I've seen him in the gym. I actually got to do a camp alongside Lamar Rose Jr. with the Diaz brothers. And Beck is a monster. His, his left hand to the body. Um, unfortunately, he got caught with Rosado, but he's come back hungrier as a fighter, come better, and I can't wait to see him fight tonight. Yeah, so that fight with Rosado, where Rosado knocked him out, it was I think went down as a knockout of the year, but before he got knocked out, he was hurting Rosado, and Gabe is a tough-as-nails fighter with Freddie Roach, but Beck said he learned a lot where you have to take your confidence down some, down and you're not going to run everybody over, so we'll see what we have from him tonight. Then a fight that got real personal. After Beck is going to be... Maurice Hooker, Mighty Mo from here in the Texas area, the Metroplex, taking on Blair the Flair Cobbs. And the fight did almost didn't get made because Hooker wasn't going to make 147. So there was an argument back and forth between the camps about the weight. They finally agreed to 150. So they are going to have a fight, but it's a personal one now between Hooker and Cobbs. And you know Maurice, don't you? Yes, I know Maurice from growing up in the amateurs. Uh, obviously a former world champion. Got to fight Virgil in this same arena. Uh, Maurice has experience, he has a resume, he has the length, he has everything uh, to make this fight a difficult fight for Cobbs. Cobbs coming from a loss against Rocha. This is going to be a very interesting fight for both fighters. And that's an interesting one. Both fighters coming on losses, and it's the crossroads, as they say, right? Where are you going to go next in your career? Are you still somebody that could be a contender, or are you going to go as the gatekeeper? That's a really interesting one. And they went back and forth. And even at this, the weigh-in, afterward, it was, was it Blair and Hooker talking? It was Blair's corner yeah. and Hooker talking. I'm there trying to interview Maurice, like, hey, Maurice, and he's just whooping away back yeah. and forth. So it was, uh, it was a good weigh-in right there. And it's also on the Golden Boy social media page. Make sure you go and check that out. Uh, make sure you follow the Instagram, the Twitter, all that good stuff. And make sure you subscribe to the Golden Boy YouTube page for more exclusive content. All right, so we are, what are we, like 10 minutes away from our first fight walk-in. Thank you for joining us. You're going to interact with us throughout the fight. We have one, two, three, four, five. I know how many we have, but I just want to count. It looks pretty good on TV when you start counting, right? <laughs> All right, so it's going to open up with a young man from Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic, Rohan Polanco, an Olympian from the Dominican who went to Tokyo. He's 7-0, and four KOs. We met him, and it was uh, he seems like he's got a big following behind him. Polanco is going to take on a veteran of over 60 fights, Dedrick Bell. Then afterwards, in the Bantamweight division, this is an interesting one. Figo Ramirez from here in Dallas. He's a Virgil Ortiz team. 1-0, 19 years old. He takes on Francisco Bonilla. Bonilla has 19 professional fights. So a young man with only one fighter, Ramirez, taking on Bonilla, who has 19. That says a lot about what they think about 
Figo Ramirez. And afterwards, Carlos Nava from Pasadena, Texas, right in the Houston area, now with the Brick House Boxing in Southern California, Trudeau Ramirez's gym takes on veteran Rodolfo Hernandez, who has 41 fights. So it's a, it's a lot of up-and-comers taking on savvy veterans. So it's to see where these two are at. And then another fight that's gotten personal, Alex Martin, Shark Time Heat, taking on the veteran Hank Lundy from Philadelphia. Chicago, Philadelphia, and anything is always going to be good. But these two, uh, it's uh, very, very interesting. That'll be a good one for you. And then our last fight here on the YouTube portion of the show, Floyd Schofield. They call him Kid Austin. He's 10-0, 8 KOs, takes on veteran El Gato Rodrigo Guerrero. And the thing about this one, Schofield recently signed a deal with Golden Boy. And normally when you're making your first fight with Golden Boy, you're the first or second fight. He's going to be the fifth one tonight. Schofield, you know him a little bit out of the Austin area, don't you? Yes, I actually go down to San Antonio every now and then, Davies Entertainment, to go spar. Uh, I got to actually work uh, against his father being in the corner, but he's a great kid. His father is pretty much that I control the social media page, so you focus on boxing type of dad. They have a great relationship. He can fight, has a big following on Instagram, all social media. So it's going to be an exciting fight actually getting him to see that that final that or that big stage that he gets to get finally so there you go wherever you may be let them know if you're a boxing fan we're moments away from our first fight walking out so you're gonna have jo joel diaz's training camp you're gonna have brick house boxing's gym represented you're gonna have team no excuse on the broadcast you have virgil ortiz and his crew manny robles also in his corner with his father the trainer marlena sparza you have ronnie Shields. so the trainers i really like tonight because you have some of the best in the business showing up to fort worth tonight alex yeah you have the best fighters you have a lot of fighters coming here you have gonna have terrence crawford in the house tonight oh. it's gonna be a big show big fighters exciting show yeah bud crawford in attendance because maurice hooker does camp with him. So Bud was here at the way edge. You see him walking around. Like, oh, yeah. Bud and Spence. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about all the upcoming shows, all that stuff that's going on. So make sure you interact with us here on the Golden Boy page. Make sure you let us know what's going on and wherever you may be watching around the world. So it's an afternoon of boxing if you're in L.A., an evening of boxing if you're across the pond. So thank you for joining us. And, Alex, let's talk about you now. You're 10-0, and 0, 7 KOs. You've been fighting on these cards, working your way up. What is it about the Texas crowd? Because I'm an L.A. kid, born and raised, but when I've done fights all over the country. Texas fans, they show up early. Look, the first fight hasn't even started, and they're, yeah. it's already starting to get yeah, packed. Yeah, they're all out. Probably to get away from that heat. The heat here is crazy. <laughs> but fans are going to come out here. They're going to make noise. There are big supporters when it comes to their fighters. A lot of fighters here being locals, Virgil, Figo, and some other fighters being from around the city. But it's going to be an exciting fight, and the fans are going to come here and be loud. Yeah, it's uh, about 100 degrees, and I don't even know how you measure humidity <laughs> outside. All I know is that as soon as you walk out, it hits you. So there's going to be a lot of guys getting hit tonight. Also the ladies, Marlena Sparza, Eva Guzman, the co-feature, Virgil Ortiz Jr., Michael McKinson. All right, prediction time. What do you see from Virgil? Let me give you the breakdown. 18-0, all KOs. Michael McKinson, 22-0, never, never lost. He's been battled. What do you see in this fight? I see McKinson getting his first loss. Virgil adding another knockout. It's going to be a, a good fight for a few rounds, but Virgil's going to take him out about five or six. Five or six is the prediction from Alex Rincon, the fighter out of Team No Excuse in the district. Shout out to them watching, LaRoche family. And we are here inside the Dickies Arena. So we mentioned it. Five fights coming your way free right here. Eight o'clock Central Time, the zone takes over. So this is how you wet your appetite. This is how you get ready. It's an afternoon. There's no football going on. It's preseason if you're watching that. You want to get some fights. They're coming your way. Young prospects ready to put on a show inside Dickey's Arena. Join us, Beth Durant, Alex Rincon. And who's our ring announcer? Oh, the pride of Austin, Texas. Is he wearing his cowboy hat? I haven't seen him yet. Jeremiah Gallegos is inside the ring. And now, boxing fans here from Dickey's Arena at Fort Worth, Texas. This is our preliminary opening, opening attraction of the evening live on Golden Boy Fight Night on YouTube. Good this job, attraction guys. is for eight rounds of the welterweight division. Introducing to you first, ready to make his ring walk. Fighting out of Memphis, Tennessee, here is Dietrich Damage Bell.
60 fights. You call Diedrich Bell because you want to see what you stack up, and we're going to see that tonight. And Beto, with fighters like this, would we'll have a long resume with that age and a lot of fights, you get two types of veterans. You get some that are going to bring a challenge or some that really have something to prove because their, their timeline's coming to an end. So we'll see what Bell comes with tonight against Polanco. Rohan Polanco, El Rayo. Coming in, 7 0, 4 KOs. Making his way. Make. Rohan. Four KOs, his last fight was in May this year. He was in Belgium, so here he is now in Texas, ready to fight. Texas, USA. This is our opening preliminary attraction. Live on Golden Boy Fight Night on YouTube. Eight rounds of the welterweight division. And it is presented to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. And sponsored to you by Hennessy. Never stop, never settle. All for tonight's fights are brought to you by Bent Online. And by Masculine. It's a mentality. Don't be a man. Be the man. The three judges scoring this contest at ringside are Steve Morrow, Robert Chapa, and David Ayakabuchi. And the referee in charge of the action of the sound of the bell, Ruben Perez. Introducing to you first tonight, fighting out of the blue corner, standing with trainer, Carrie Pete, wearing white with teal. He officially weighed in 146.8 pounds. This evening, this in-ring veteran enters his contest for the 65th time as a professional with 17 KO victories. Hailing from Memphis, Tennessee, here is Tietrich Damage Pound. <laughs> and across the ring stands his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, standing with trainer Hector Bermudez. Tonight wearing red with blue, he officially weighted 147 pounds. And seven professional contests, his record is perfect. Seven victories, seven bouts. Four wins coming to you by way of knockout. No defeats. El Invicto representando Santo Domingo, República Dominicana. Here is Rohan El Rayo Polanco. Ruben Perez, the third man in the ring as we get ready to go. Our opening broadcast here on Golden Boys YouTube page. We appreciate you jumping on with us. Five fights coming your way as we get ready to go in Fort Worth, Texas. Beth Duran alongside Alex Rincon, Golden Boy prospect, who's 10-0 and with seven KOs. Our first fight is ready to go. This one is going to be eight rounds in the welterweight division. Polanco. 8-7-0, 4 KOs. And shout out to all the Polancos watching us right now. 
representing the Dominican Republic. El Rayo, the nickname. Why? Because he's fast. That's the name they gave him. Uh, went to the Tokyo Olympics. Started boxing when he was 10 years old. He's a young man that uh, they're really excited about. And he's taking on a veteran in Diedrich Bell, who's 38 years old with 64 fights under his belt. See, Polanco is a very poised, very calm fighter. He walks in very relaxed. He likes that Philly shell. He has a really quick, sharp jab. Bell came in, caught him with a with a good jab, relaxing a little too much, and that might be uh, Polanco's downfall if he relaxes a little too much. So Polanco, he in his eighth pro fight, going eight rounds. Here is the opening bout here at the Dickies Arena in Fort Worth, Texas, working our way towards the main event of Virgil Ortiz and Michael McKinson to be live on the zone. And there you see, right there, arms folded, Roberto Diaz, Golden Boy matchmaker. Next to him, Robert Gaspari, COO of Golden Boy. Marco Palayo, CFO, Javier Rosso, also a matchmaker for Golden Boy. So the front office is out here watching Polanco. He's not signed with him, but there's people looking. And this is the type of fight that you want to have coming up not signed. It's your time to shine. It's time to showcase your, your talent. And uh, Polanco is doing a good job so far, keeping the jab, keeping uh, Bell at bay. I just want to see him kind of make sure he, he creates his openings first, not get a little too eager early. Represent he landed a good shot. That yes, he did, and that, he's hurt, and Bell is down here in the first. Went to the body, then he went upstairs. He gets up at nine, right at nine. That's that veteran move. We don't know how to get to nine and a half. If it would take a little bit longer, that would have been, yeah. that would have been a night. And you can tell he feels uh, Polanco's power. And Polanco jumping in right away. He's letting the grunts out, attacking. Upstairs, going up again is Polanco. Bell is just covering up. Polanco trying to knock out Bell here. The referee tells him, show me something. And he's attacking like a bull, getting after it. Here's Polanco in the red and blue, the colors of the Republica Dominicana. Bell's a veteran. He knows how to survive. He knows how to get in there and make it competitive. But right now you got a young bull. Polanco's 23 young, year hungry, old. Young, hungry fighter uh, Polanco is. And he's he's just pawing out that jab right now, putting him on the ropes. Bell needs to stay off the ropes. If he doesn't want to want this fight to end early, he needs to stay off the ropes, keep that jab out, and make Polanco pay for being too relaxed. Final seconds of the opening round. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. You can tweet us, go to the Golden Boy account. Just like Abraham Gonzalez from NewYorkFights.com. Appreciate the tweet, Abraham. Thank you for joining us. Let's look at the replays here. And Polanco's landing a good right hand right down the middle of the guard and landing that left hook. That left hook has been money so far in this fight. If Bell stays on the ropes, that's going to happen this round and the fight shouldn't go on any further if he keeps doing that. Up next, you're going to see young Figo Ramirez, our first fight of the afternoon here in Texas. Hernando Perez, the timekeeper, lets us know we're doing it here in the second. So you want to see what Polanco He's going to have. He started boxing when he was 10 years old. He played baseball, basketball. He saw a boxing gym went in. Game changer. Coming from the Dominican Republic, I feel like baseball is, is a given. You're going to yeah. have to play baseball. He que jugaba la pelota, but it was basketball. He likes Kyrie Irving. That's his guy. Father of a young boy, Rohan Angel, his baby. El maestro El Barron, Armando Hernandez, took it to the Olympics. Y saludos a La Mella, his mom. Y todos los que nos están mirando en los Huaricano, la República Dominicana. We had a little watch party for him in Santo Domingo. Beautiful right uppercut by Polanco. He's catching Bell. He's throwing good jabs to the body, good sticks to the body, bending him down. 
and he's adding that right hand. Whether it's an uppercut, if he stra straightens him up, he's throwing that right hand down the middle. He just needs to keep adding that, maybe add a, a hook behind that shot that can put him down or hurt him. And you can right hear hook. the punches here at ringside. The thud from the shots. Downing shots, good body shot by Polanco. And at this point, Bell's trying to just guard up, but if he's just not coming back with anything, Polanco's going to just let off. He needs to keep that jab out, move a little bit more. Good body shot again. He felt that. Yes, he back. did. And there's the he delay. He's in the corner, and that's the veteran for Bell. I felt it. My knee buckled. And let me try to tackle you. <laughs> I mean, when you've had 67 fights, I'm sorry, 64 fights, you've picked up a trick or two over the day. And right there, what Bell's doing, that's a good jab right there. He needs to just keep doing that. He needs to keep doing that. He needs to keep moving if he wants to, wants to survive all eight rounds. That body shot's landing money. He knows. Polanco knows. He's adding to it. And that body shot got him. That's a left from Polanco. That might do it as Bell is writhing in pain on the mat. I don't know if he's going to get up from this one because that one hurt really bad. And that's it. It does it. It's over. A knockout for Irayo Rohan Polanco. He's now 8 0, 5 KOs. Two thirteen of the second round, the official stoppage. Yeah, Polanco, no big celebration for him. He knows that was his job. He knows what he came here to do, and and he looked beautiful doing it. He was very really calm. I, I would like to see Polanco come a little bit more alert. He's a little too relaxed on his defense. That Philly shell is he likes it, but I can tell it's just, it's not his. It shouldn't be his defense. He relaxed a little too much. Bell really shouldn't have landed any shots on him. He stands up a little too tall. I would like to see him kind of clean up and polish that defense a little bit, but effective offense, beautiful offense, using that jab, adding hooks around, and a beautiful left body shot to, to end, the, end the fight. Let's see some highlights from this fight that ends at 213 of the second round. And like I said, those hooks were setting up a lot of punches. He kept bringing the hooks up top, finally brought it to the bottom. He was using a lot of sticks, a lot of that jab to the body, but that left hand, once Polanco saw that it was an opening, he just kept attacking that body shot. And there's a shot that ended it. Went down immediately. Yeah, that body shot had him in pain. Bell's still just sitting on the stool, but it took him a good, good few minutes to get him back up. Jeremiah, is ready. Jeremiah Gallegos, our ring announcer for tonight. As Polanco's team is celebrating. Very subdued. It's like, hey, this is business. We took care of it. Ladies and gentlemen, here from Dickies Arena in Fort Worth, Texas, our referee Ruben Perez reaches the count of 10. The official time comes to you, 2:13. Round number two is still undefeated. You win by KO from Santo Domingo, Republica Dominicana, Rohan El Rayo Polanco. Y felicidades a los Guaricano, la mamá, la mella in the Repu Dominican Republic as their son gets to return home with a record of 8 0, 5 KOs for Rohan Polanco. I, I get what you're saying there, Rincon. Uh, you want to see him do a little bit more, but also some of that has to do with the opposition, too, right? Where you know that you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I think he just, he just knew that he was, he was coming here to. Eh, I would want to say he almost survived, but Polanco did his job. He's a little too relaxed, and I just want to see that him polish that up, make him look a little bit more of an impressive win, but as a fighter, you always want to fix things. All right, let's look at the full fight card. It's five of them coming your way here on YouTube. The first fight underway, and it's done. Rohan Polanco takes care of De Dedrick Bell in the second round KO. Coming up, Spiegel Ramirez and Francisco Bonilla. More action coming from Dickens Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. This was my second professional fight. I fought at the Cowboy Stadium in the Canelo Smith card. Uh, you know, I was still kind of green in the professionals, and uh, when I was warming up in there, Rohan, I didn't really feel like I warmed up. Like, I didn't have my mind. Like, oh, I'm about to fight. 
So when I went in the ring, I was kind of like, I wasn't in the zone. I knock him out with the straight right. And I'm just like, what just happened? Like, and then I, I left the ring. I didn't feel like I fought, you know, I didn't get into the zone. So it was just kind of weird for me, but it, it was definitely one of my best knockouts. So this fight was against Angel Sariana. It was my fifth fight, and I fought the day before Canelo fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And I went in there thinking like, oh, I'm gonna knock this guy out, or at least I have to, you know? So in that first round, man, I put everything I had into that first round, and I made a big mistake. I was tired that second and third round, but this is where I had to use my brain. Uh, you know, it's not always bronze. You got to use your brain sometimes. I set him up with a jab to the body, and I saw that he kind of leaned forward a little bit. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to come with the uppercut, and it landed. That was the moment people were expecting. And we don't know who he is. We don't know who he is. This was one of, definitely one of my uh, hardest fights uh, that I ever had to date. So this fight, I believe, was my ninth fight. It was the first time I had headlined any card. It was at the Belasco in Los Angeles. And um, this was also my first fight with uh, Robert Garcia. I feel like the way I fought before, you know, my, my first eight fights to that fight really changed. I, I was settled down more, but at the same time, I felt like I was more, how do I say, explosive. Like my, all of my punches started to matter. Nice, left hook to the liver, and down goes Salgado. I landed a, a great body shot, uh, and that's what stopped the fight. And you know what, it was just, uh, I was very ha happy after that fight. You, you could see me screaming at the c camera after the fight. I, I, I don't do that, but I, I was really uh, happy about that fight. So this was my third fight. I fought in Indio, California, and you know, like I said, I was still green. I was still learning, uh, trying to pace myself a little bit. Earlier in the fight, I had hit a hard jab to his head. I'm like, wow, like that didn't hurt you at all? And then I hit that uh, hard jab again. You see the eyes of him? Oh, he goes jab. down. And that was a jab a that caught one, huh? right. It caught Garcia coming straight in. I just dropped him with a jab. Like, that's, I've never done that. I've never even hurt anyone with a jab before. So that was just very, uh, very new. And that's, that, I started to realize maybe like, I have a little bit of power on me. Not only was this fight very meaningful to me, the most meaningful out of all my fights, but I, I fought uh, as a co-main event for Canelo under the, the Canelo Jacobs undercard. And I went into this fight thinking like, dude, I'm not, there's no way I'm knocking this guy out. Like, I, it's not that I didn't believe in myself, but for me to believe that I was, I would have been jumping too far ahead of myself. and. Uh, you know, we had a game plan from the beginning, which was just to, you know, not smother myself, just be uh, calm, pick my shots. And, you know, you, when you think of that, you're like, I'm not going to knock him out. There's, like, no uh, go for the kill or anything like that. But it just happened. I saw him do a certain move, and I just went right over his jab, right, right over his jab. He threw a jab, and I saw that he reacted to it, like, real quick. So, you know what, I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to go right over it. And I did, and that's what hurt him the first time. And then I pretty much did the same thing for the knockout. Just swinging away, connecting clearly. And Herrera is down and out. That is it. A ferocious right hand just knocked out Mauricio Herrera. This fight uh, means so much to me. It, it really shot up my career. Uh, top five KOs were Virgil Ortiz, Jr., 18 and 0, 18 KOs. That's our main event tonight on DAZN. Todd Grisham on the broadcast along with Chris Maddox and Sergio Moore. I'm Bethel Duran alongside Alex Rincon. We just saw Rohan Polanco get his fifth knockout. He's now 8 and 0. Felicidades, como te sientes? Bien, bien. Bien, gracias a Dios. How do you feel? Of course, you can understand that part. I don't have to translate that. Mirates que tenías oportunidad de por el knockout. You saw the knockout opportunity. ¿Por qué fuiste por it? Why'd you go for it? Eh, el plan era meterle presión desde el principio, eh, usar mi rapidez, eso. Yeah, the plan was to go after him and attack and use my speed. Ok, Rohan, te entristamos, te trajimos aquí para que le mandarle saludos a toda la familia en Dominican Republic. Mándalos. Un saludo a mi mamá, a la mella y a mi familia, a los emilianos. Lo amo mucho y gracias por el apoyo a toda mi gente dominicana y a toda mi gente de Guaricano. Guaricano, hey. 
Rohan Polanco, felicidades, 8-0. Eight, five KOs, man, congratulations. All right, let's go back to the ring. Jeremiah Gallegos is ready to bring in our next fight. All right, so Jeremiah Gallegos is inside the ring. Amber Juliana is a ring, uh, ring girl tonight, so we're all right. We got plenty of ways to figure things out. We're going to get it for you. We are here ringside, Beth Durant, alongside Alex Rincon, working out the kinks here, getting it going, Dickie's Arena. Alex, back here ringside. Our first fight is done, right? Felt good. Rohan Polanco is a young man. Not much emotion from him because that's what you're supposed to do. He felt pretty good. I like his attitude, though. Yeah, he's very humble. You can tell he's a young fighter. And uh, he did his job how he was supposed to. He went out there. He looked calm. He did his job, was very effective. And definitely, I would say, Roberto Diaz and the whole Golden Boy crew is very impressed. All right, so there you go. So our next bout is going to be Figo Ramirez taking on Francisco Bonilla. And after that, Carlos Nava and Rodolfo Hernandez. Alex Martin taking on Hank Lundy. And then Floyd Schofield taking on Rodrigo Guerrero. So those are the fights coming your way. Our next bout, oh, what is it? I don't know. Jeremiah Gallegos, let's go inside the ring. And no fight fans, we are set for our next feature. Four rounds of the Pantoloid Tolition. Introducing to you first, her to make his ring walk. Representando Chihuahua, Mexico, here is Francisco. El remache Bonilla. From Chihuahua, Mexico, that's Francisco Bonilla. Better of 20 fights coming your way. When he has a, a tough veteran that's going to come up here and, and test Figo Ramirez, Figo Ramirez being from Dallas, Texas, it's going to be a very good fight to see. He's going to come here and test Figo, make him earn his second win or second fight. Bonilla with 22 fights under his belt. Remache is his nickname. Jeremiah Gallegos, let's bring in the red corner. And his opponent, strike from the big D, Dallas, Texas. Here is Figo, La Machina And you hear the crowd making noise from Dallas, Texas. Little Figo chant for him. Little Thunderstruck coming in. Little ACDC coming in. He probably got some, uh, some of that rock influence from Virgil. Yeah. Figo coming in with his father. And uh, this is going to be an exciting fight to watch. Figo being at home, having a crowd behind him. He's young. This is his second fight. He's 19 years old. Figo fighting for the first time in his hometown. So it's going to be a very interesting fight to watch. Jeremiah, let's go. And all right, fans, the action continues here from Dickies Arena in Fort Worth, Texas, USA. Live on Golden Boy Fight Night on YouTube. And it's being presented by Oscar Zelaya's Golden Boy Promotions. 
This next feature is for four rounds in the Bantamweight Division. Introducing to you first tonight, body out of the blue corner, standing with trainer Odilon Zaneta. Wearing red with white, he officially weighed in 117 pounds. Tonight, this young fellow steps into this contest for the 23rd time as a professional with three KO victories. Representando Chihuahua, Mexico, here is Francisco Eramoche Bonilla. And across the ring stands his opponent, hunting out of the red corner, standing with trainer Hector Beltran. Tonight wearing black with blue, trunk with white, who officially weighed in 117, one more pounds. Here this evening, ready to make his second professional appearance with a perfect record, hailing from the big team, Dallas, Texas, and USA, the undefeated Figo La Machina Ramirez. Neil Young, the third man in the ring, as we get ready to go. Our second bout of the night, working our way towards Virgil Ortiz Jr. and Michael the Problem McKinson. Beth Duran alongside Go the Boy Prospect 10 0. Alex Rincon from Carrollton, Texas. We're in Fort Worth, ready for this matchup. It's four rounds in the Bantam Weight Division. Figo Ramirez, La Machina, with the black gloves. He's got a crowd inside Dickey's Arena. He's 19. 1 and 0. Oh. His only fight was in Mexico. And here he is fighting in his backyard, getting ready to put on the show. He trains with Virgil Ortiz and Hector Beltran. For the non Spanish speakers at home, La Maquina stands for the machine. Figo being a workhorse and being a machine in there is where they get that from. And Figo throwing that jab, establishing that jab, trying to get that ring generalship. They like him a lot. He has a subdued attitude. So Figo getting after it. He's got the black and blue. He goes and attacks. He won by a first round KO against Brian Soto April 1st, and he's coming out immediately. And you can hear the cheers for Figo. Figo being a young fighter, this isn't, a, this isn't gonna be a good fight to build his career, his confidence, and his, and his resume. But most importantly, his confidence and his experience. He's, getting in, he's in there with a, a tough veteran. He's already kind of going in the war. I wanna say toe to toe, but he's, he's trading shots with Bonilla and uh, he needs to stay on that jab to keep him away. Yeah, he's fighting the veteran Francisco Bonilla, who's 35 years old from Chihuahua. Golden Boy's used it before. He's fought Asa Stevens, a Golden Boy prospect. Also, he fought a uh, former Mexican Olympian, Joselito Velasquez, Oscar, Oscar Callaso. His last fight was July this year. We have stopped in the sixth round. So he goes the distance with you. He's he's battle tested 100%. With less than a minute to go in the opening round. Definitely a durable fighter. Uh, Bonilla is uh, he's coming in forward. He's got that. That stereotypical Mexican style, that Mexican fighting style. He's coming forward, kind of leans on that front foot, which Figo needs to take advantage and pop that jab when he catches onto his rhythm. Beautiful overhand set up by Figo, too. I'll say this, though, after with two minutes and 20 seconds, Figo Ramirez doesn't look like a fighter who's only in a second pro fight. I like his style. Yeah, for that tempo, usually young fighters that haven't got much, much fights or rounds under their belt, they, they would be fatigued a little bit right now at its show. Figo's looking sharp, he's looking strong, he's in shape. Being a part of Virgil's camp, you have to be in shape. Doubling up the jab is the 19-year-old in black. Final seconds of the opening round. Fiegel goes to the body, goes upstairs. Dig it to the body is Fiegel, and he eats an uppercut, though. But he answers back with a one-two. Good round. Good round. The youngster, the veteran. What are you made of? Let's find out. Good action-packed round. When he had caught him with a good uppercut at the end of the round, uh, definitely tested uh, Ramirez's chin. 
But for someone this young coming into second spot, he's looking really good. This is a very good, good test for Figo, like I said before. And that right overhand slightly touching Figo. Figo's using that jab. Good range that he's setting up. Throwing that right hand, throwing punches, going to the body. But Bonilla's going to come back no matter what. Figo's young. Bonilla probably doesn't necessarily feel his strength. He's a veteran. He's older. Figo's still young. Trying to get his man's strength, but you definitely see Figo letting his hands go and making Bonilla feel his combinations. If it's not power, he's feeling the speed. Hector Beltran, Carlos Martinez working cuts. Manny Robles in the corner of 19-year-old Figo Ramirez. So Figo, where does that name come from? Well, his dad named him after a professional soccer player named Figo, his brother Zidane. So is that a huge soccer fan? Is Figo? Nah. All about boxing for the young man. You can check out his interview on the Golden Boy Insider on the YouTube page. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be around the world. I know a lot of people in Texas are here watching Figo. He's brought the crowd and his fans wearing Figo t-shirts are standing up inside Dickey's Arena. Pretty cool to see as he makes his U.S. debut. And you know, Beto, when you're coming fresh out of the amateurs, you get so much support. People are always excited to see you go pro, especially being on a big, big card like Virgil Ortiz's card, it being a Golden Boy card. He's going to have a lot of support. He's going to have a lot of fans. And like I said, coming out fresh out of the amateurs, going into the boxing, boxing wise, oh, low shot by Figo. Low blow. Are they going to give Bonilla some time? Uh, he says he's fine. Bonilla, he's lost his last eight fights, but he's been brought in as an opponent. To, to, to test the young fighters. He lost his last eight, but it's been durable. And Good shot by Figo. And Put he the goes pressure. upstairs in the corners. Bonilla covering up is the veteran trying to hold on, and he does. He's grasped after he was stung. Good poise by Figo trying to create that space, even though Bonilla was trying to clinch. He needs to just add a little half step back, create that distance. And good body work by Figo trying to wear down this veteran. Bonilla Lynch has lost his last eight. Five of those fighters were undefeated. So it's not been easy. He's here to test you, but he gives you rounds and another. You're warning him. Bring it up. And they're going to take a point away from Figo. The second time he goes low in the round, and this time he has a point taken away. Figo's got to be very careful with those body shots. He might have to switch it up. It being a four-round four fight, that's not something good you want to have in a four-round fight. When he's applying good pressure, putting his head up against Figo's head, trying to, <laughs> trying to pull a little LeBron yeah. flop there. More like Chris Paul, in my opinion, though. Oh, says the Texas guy. One, two, three from Figo in the black. Good movement by Figo. You see, this is where you, you start to see that a amateur resume where you see that movement, you see good ring control, and, and again, him coming out to amateurs, you're going to see a lot of activity. Amateurs only have X amount of rounds, three rounds, sometimes a shorter time than three minutes, so they are taught and drilled to throw. Throw, throw in combinations. But Figo's showing a lot of good. The good way experience. he pivots around the ring, that's really nice. Yeah, beautiful footwork, good movement, staying light on his feet, Bo and boxing backwards. A lot of times you don't see fighters being comfortable moving back, but he's showing good footwork, good head movement. That'll do it for two. Good ring generalship by Figo, but unfortunately, that point, the duction. It's either going to even it out or almost even give that round to Bonilla. Here's Figo throwing that body shot, that right hook to the body, going on the belt line. And right there, he's a little smothered, a little too close. Can't really let his shots off there, but good good work on the arms, the body. Even though those arm shots aren't landing flush, it's going to wear a fighter down. It's going to wear their guard down where over time that those punches will slip through the guard. And that body shot, a little, uh, I would call that on the belt line. I wouldn't take a point off of that one. I would say that's a wrong call by the referee. But, but when you already had one, 
Here we now, that was Neil Young, the referee. Get it to the third round. Bethel Duran alongside Golden Boy prospect Alex Rincon. And shout out to Yahir Martinez, Fight Hub TV. Check it out right now. Yahir, Yahir, shout out to Yahir. Good yep. friend. Yep. One thing about this is you look at the records, Fiegel 1 and 0. Like, why are you finding a guy with 22 fights? Hector Beltran was telling us because it's hard to find opponents for Figo that are of quality. You know, they could have got somebody who's, you know, three and five, but they're not going to give resistance. Bonilla's coming to make you work, and that's what you want to see from a young prospect. From a young prospect, you want to <laughs> see him tested. And Figo's coming here. He wants to definitely show his, his skill set being his first fight on a Golden Boy card. And so far, he's shown, he's shown his skills. He's looking good. Young fighter, but looks very experienced. But Figo with Virgil Ortiz. They used to fight in the amateurs together. Virgil showed me a picture of a young Figo. They go to the tournaments. And he now does camp in Southern California in the gym that Manny Robles is at. And they use him for sparring for a lot of different fighters. He's, as Manny said, he holds his own with a lot of people. And I know Figo personally. If you think you're going to see this fighter get, con get tired or get fatigued, this kid right here is probably one of the fastest kids I've ever seen run. Well, that's just another thing. When you're training with Virgil, the expectation level is we're going to work and then some. Good body shot by Bonilla, applying the pressure. And Figo showing good, good poise, moving, staying composed. You want to, you definitely want to see that coming from a young fighter, it being his second fight. Yeah, and you know, you're guilty of this. Everybody is their first, second fights. It's, let's get in the ring and just, let's just trade, right? Like, let me go ahead, honey. Looking very poised is 19-year-old Figo. And actually, on my actual second fight, I, I had a guy hurt. I, I just started just throwing and throwing. Instead of taking my time, but that comes with experience in the pro game. You see somebody hurt. Amateurs, it's not as easy hurting these people with his gloves and the headgear, but Figo's showing great composure. Like he said he's a older soul. He's listening to ACDC, Zeppelin, and ooh, on the border of the belt line. Be careful with that. He already had a point taken away. See, what Figo needs to do is just aim more, a little bit more at the arms. A good right hand by Bonilla. Yeah. Caught Figo leaning in. Those are the punches you have to be careful. You you throw that right hand and try to slip your head out, Bonilla caught him slipping his head out and through. So he has to be careful with those shots. Don't lean. Just keep him at distance. Keep turning him. He's turning him beautifully. He just needs to keep pivoting, keep that jab going. Every once in a while, switch directions to the right side like he's doing right now. Figo made his uh, pro debut in Sinaloa, Mazatlan, on a Zapati card. Good shot right on the belt line by Figo, but he still needs to be careful. That's, you're, he's pretty much gambling with, with that, those body shots right now with how consistent they're on the belt line. Great third round by Figo on Bonilla. Bonilla applying the pressure, Figo boxing. Figo throwing that jab. Bonilla coming under with that uppercut, applying the pressure, and Figo being slippery. Good defense, moving around. Moving side to side. If you're a backwards fighter against Bonilla, he's going to bring you to the ropes. But Figo's doing a good job moving, staying disciplined, sticking to the game plan by turning him. And there's that right hand I was talking about, Beto. Caught him falling in. Luckily, he didn't put much behind that shot. Figo, that would have been a, a bad spot for Figo to be in. But good, good boxing by Figo. He's looking good. He's looking sharp. Bonilla applying really good pressure, testing Figo on the second fight. And that's what you want. You want a chance to get some tape and go back and look how you can improve. And Figo tonight, get a hit, which is good, which is what you want. There's no nothing good with a 15-second knockout. Like, I mean, it's great for Instagram, but <laughs> career, what are you going to do with it? It's good well, for the, the gram. It looks good. Gets you followers, gets you likes. But at the end of the day, you want that, you want that test. You want iron, sh iron sharpening iron. And that's what's happening right now. Fourth and final round. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. Figo Ramirez, soft-spoken kid, but he comes and brings a punch. They call him Figo, <laughs> Figod. <laughs> That's what the team. Has. And I already know who make a, who made that nickname up. I would want to get make a good guess. It's either his coach he Hector, who's a child at heart, or his teammates. Both. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I I dropped that on him, and he kind of gave me that look. Like, how do you know this man? <laughs> like, where gets around fast with that camp, man. They're they're, they're young-hearted and great camp to be around. You need that in a camp, especially being at Figo's age. It's 
It's a lot of sacrifice to be in this sport, being pro, moving for camps. Yep. He's also fighting at 118. Uh, the goal is to have him at 115, but it's harder to get him fights. So that's why he's fighting at 118. And I actually came in under. But as they progress, he'll be at 15. Good body, body shot. shot by Figo. Setting up with that jab. Bonilla keeps that left hand high and good right hand. Uh -huh. Gotta switch it up. Very nice Let's from Figo. Up. Goes back upstairs. Good movement. Good Look. movement. Start of Vivero Boxing, Irvine Powell here in Texas. Now on a Golden Boy show at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, working towards the main event of his stablemate, Virgil Ortiz Jr., who will take it on Michael McKinson later on the night. You're right, looking at him, he doesn't look tired at all. As we approach a minute to go in the fourth and final round. So for, for a young fighter, Activity can get you tired or pressure, and it being mental pressure, you being under these lights, a whole new stage that you're that you're not used to. And he's looking great. He's looking great, and he's definitely in the right right spot in his career. Just getting on. Exciting times for Figo La Máquina Ramírez. As Bonilla Remache, still tough right there for you. The quality rounds, the back and forth. Landing his shots, getting hit a couple times. They'll go back and look at the tape and, like, okay, this is what we can improve on. And at this point, Bonilla's down on the cards. We would want to see him just keep pulling those combinations and try to pull a knockout out right now. But Figo's not letting him with that jab and that movement. The movement of Figo's been nice tonight. The action's been nice between Figo Ramirez and Francisco Bonilla. They started the fight swinging. They're going to end the fight going back and forth. And that'll do it. Four good rounds between the youngster and the veteran. It goes the distance, and it'll go to the judges' scorecards. Our second bout of the night here in Fort Worth, Texas. There in the corner, a little shiner underneath the left eye of Figo Ramirez. You see Hector Beltran with the hat backwards. He'll be in the corner of Virgil Ortiz later on tonight in the main event. Manny Robles taking off the gloves of the 19-year-old fighter. Once again, uh, the added, that's Figo right there, right? No emotion at all. <laughs> no emotion. Young poise, young poise fighter on his second fight. And here a little bit of highlights, good jabs, good hooks set up by Figo's jab. And Beautiful body shot. That was a little risky after that point in that he was kind of gambling with going to the body, but he kept it right above the belt line, and he just kept throwing. And a good test for Figo. It's something that you definitely want to see out of a young fighter fighting in his hometown and definitely proud of his performance. And if you can hear the child, the, the crowd uh, chanting his name right now, Figo, Figo, over and over, big support. That must feel good for a young fighter fighting in his second pro fight. All right, Jeremiah Gallegos in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, here from Dickey's Arena, we now go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges have the score identical, 39 to 36, to the winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated from Dallas, Texas, we go La Machina so Fig Figo Rodriguez, Figo Ramirez, I'm sorry, Figo, gets the decision. 39-36, he had the point taken off in the second round, so congratulations to his man. 2-0 now. Are you going to tell him he's your boy? Tell him it's okay to smile after you win. I'm going to have to tell him, man. He needs to, he needs to lighten up a little, smile a little bit. He just fought four rounds with a tough veteran. Deserve a smile. He's just so young, he can tell he's 
He's just trying to get nervous, but giving his fans oh, there a wave. It is. There's there it is. a yeah. smile. There's a smile. So he's looking at you. There it is. All right. Now the emotions out there. Now it's yeah. going to hit him like, damn, I just fought at Dickey's Arena uh, where he, he, he saw that get built. He saw the vid. You see Fer Virgil fight here, and now he gets to fight here. So two fights down, three more to go. Rohan Polanco had a first, second round KO. Figo Ramirez goes the distance, gets his victory, but that was it. A tough Francisco Bonilla who gave him everything he could handle in four rounds. Three more fights coming your way. Carlos Lava from Houston, Texas coming up. And Alex Martin against Hank Lundy. Floyd Schofield, Kid Austin. I know he's got a big crowd watching us right now. He'll be taking on Rodrigo Guerrero. Bethel Duran alongside Alex Rincon, a fighter out of Team No Excuse. Also in... Uh, the Dallas area, so you know what's going on. We're working our way towards the main event of uh, Virgil Ortiz and Michael McKinson. What do you expect to see in that fight, Alex Rincon? I expect to see McKinson being cautious, being smart, which he should be, and keeping his distance. I will see Virgil coming out, throwing his jab, a lot of feints Virgil's known for, and I don't see the fight going six, I don't see the fight going past six rounds. Don't see it going past six rounds. That's the prediction of Alex Rincon. Your record now, Alex, what is it? 10-0 with seven knockouts. What, you got anything in the horizon? Anything building? Not yet, not yet. Just here enjoying the fights, calling the fights alongside of you, just looking up to you. I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> you don't want to be a heavyweight. Stay up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go, Dickies Arena starting to fill in later on the night. It's going to be sold out for Virgil Ortiz against Michael McKenzie. Thank you for watching us right now. We know there's fights going on uh, across the pond. I think Michael Conlin is fighting right now. So thank you for joining us. Three more for you going on the Golden Boy YouTube page. Make sure you subscribe uh, to the page and also follow the Golden Boy social media accounts. Great job by Jessica Rosales and uh, Larry and Bobby D and everybody behind the scenes putting up great content. Luis running the show for us here. Yeah, you know, right away, Alex, see, there they go, the comments. You do not want to be like Beto. No, you're right. <laughs> you do not want to be like Beto. No problem, man. Haters got to calm down, man. These haters got to calm down. No, no, that's my problem. Beto's a, oh, okay, never mind. That, yeah, he can hate. That's the family. That's the family. There <laughs> he you can go. Hate. There it is. Green light. There it is. Hey, Justin J Donnelly watching us in Cork, the Republican of Ireland. You get to hear Jeremiah Guy Eagles now. He was in the ring bringing our next fight up. And no fight fans, we resume the action here from Dickey's Arena. This next contest is for six rounds in the super lightweight division. Introducing to you first, desde la ciudad de México, México, here is Rodolfo Popo Hernández. And his opponent, fighting out of Pasadena, Texas, USA, Carlos Quiles Nava. And that's Carlos Nava representing Brickhouse Boxing, Pasadena, Texas, outside the Houston area.
Jump. And now, fight fans, we resume the action here in Fort Worth, Texas, live on Golden Boy Fight Night on YouTube. This next feature is scheduled for six rounds in the super lightweight division, and it's brought to you courtesy of Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Zurdo Promotions. Your three judges scoring this contest at ringside are Javier Alvarez, Robert Chapa, and Steve Morrow, and your referee in charge of the action at the sound of the bell, Neil Young. Introducing to you first tonight, fighting out of the blue corner, standing with trainer Hugo Partida, tonight wearing red with gold. He officially weighed in 135 pounds. Tonight, this in-ring veteran enters this contest with a record of 42 bouts, 30 victories, 28 wins coming to you by way of knockout, 10 defeats with one draw. Desde la ciudad de México, México, here is Rodolfo Fofo Hernández. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner tonight, standing with trainer Julian Chua, wearing black with white and green trim. He officially weighed in 138.8 pounds in a professional contest. His record is flawless. Eight victories with five wins coming to by way of knockout. No defeats here representing Brickhouse Boxing Club in Los Angeles, California, hailing from Pasadena, Texas, the undefeated Carlos Kiles Nava. Okay, gentlemen, we're over in the dressing room. Remember to obey my commands at all time, okay? Touch them up and good luck to you. We get, get ready to get ready to go. Get ready to go here in Frisco. Uh, we're not Frisco. We've been to Frisco. You <laughs> fought in Frisco. Where are we at? Fort Worth. Fort, Fort Worth, Worth, Texas. Bethlehem alongside Alex Rincon as we are getting ready. For Virgil Ortiz in the main event. Right now is Carlos Nava. He's got the red gloves. 8 0, 5 KOs out of Pasadena, Texas, near Houston. His family is here with him. Training with Brick House Boxing veteran Rodolfo Bofo Hernandez. Bofo is tough. He'll come at you. He's got 41 fights and a firefight starting right away, which is what Nava. It's not your own four, but he's going to come out and start attacking. And Hernandez, with a lot of fights under his belt, but a lot to clean up. He's coming in with his head forward, swinging wide shots. What Nava needs to do is just throw some shots right down the middle. Yeah. Ball four from Mexico City. Hugo Partida in his corner. Julian Chua, Joey Figueroa in the corner of Carlos Nava. Nava coming in attacking. Real sharp, too, with that right hand. Fernandez is using that little forearm, little veteran move, putting that forearm right on the neck to keep that distance to make him uncomfortable. But Nava's establishing that range, doing a really good job, check hooking, throwing that jab, measuring, keeping the distance. But Hernandez needs to be careful with the way he falls in. Good right hand by, by Hernandez. Nava, 24 years old. Ball for 36. You can hear the crowd filling in at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Nava turned pro in 2021. Now switching into the southpaw stance in the corner, moving around. And Breakhouse Boxing is the gym where Sudo Ramirez does his work in Southern California. Also, Scrappy Ramirez, 115 pounder. But he walks in that gym, he gets inspired to see the, the level where you got to get to. Does his camps in Southern California. You got to get out of your comfort zone. And I know that feeling, me from being from Texas as well, him from being from Pasadena, stepping away from home is a good thing for you, staying focused whenever you're just breathing, sleep, eat, boxing. That's all you're doing. You just focus on that. No errands to run. 
No one's stressing you out. It's just you, the gym, rest, focus. Yeah, the sacrifices you got to make in the life of a pro fighter. Our third bout of the afternoon here in Texas. Good one, two, landed by Nava. We're working our way towards the main event of Virgil Ortiz and Michael McKinson. That gets going at 8 o'clock Central Time with Todd Grisham, Serge Amora, and Chris Mannix on the broadcast. It opens up with Bektemir Melikuziev and also Maurice Hooker taking on Blair Cobbs, Marlena Sparza, Eva Guzman. So a stack card on the zone later on tonight. Look at some of the replays from that opening round, Alex Rincon. Good discipline by Nava this first round, just keeping that jab, establishing the distance. But Hernandez coming with a lot of awkward shots coming from every angle. Doubles up that left uppercut. Falling in, they both got to be careful with the headbutts. But Nava doing a good job keeping his range, using that jab. I like to see him kind of sit a little bit more on that right hand. He kind of falls forward with that right hand when he throws it. Establish that jab and actually set it up and bring that left hook behind it. Hernandez is kind of dipping down. If he just adds that left hook, that'll be there. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. This afternoon, if you just join us right now, step it around. That was the voice of Alex Rincon, 10 and 0, 7 and 0. Golden Boy Prospect out of Washington, D.C.'s team. No excuse, but a Texas boy in his own right. Shout out to Francisco Salazar watching us. Excellent boxing scribe. You can read Francisco's bylines in numerous publications. Watching some afternoon boxing. Also, excellent soccer coach in the 805. Right now, Carlos Nava ain't no five KOs. Nava mentioned had to leave his comfort zone. He said he wanted to take the next step, fighting off the ropes. He was the main sparring partner for Sergey Lipinitz. Lipinitz last fight. He was also sparring and right. drops him. Oh, a big right hand by Nava. He was off the ropes waiting to counter, and indeed he did as Hernandez hits the deck here in the second. And just like I said about though, he's coming with open shots. If he just throws shots right down the middle, he's gonna land. He's gonna he's bound to fall in. This is a six-round fight. With someone as as almost desperate for those shots to land because he sees Nava fighting back, and Nava's fighting back comfortably. He wants to reach. He's going to land that right hand. Nava will land that right hand if he throws it while he's coming in. Nava, father of a newborn, Julian, said he hadn't seen him for seven weeks because of the sacrifice he had to make to leave camp. Didn't see his boy until this week. He said he's inspired because that's what he's fighting for. Also, he has his five-year-old Aaron inside the building today, and they're saying his, their dad put on a good show early on. Good flurry by Hernandez put, applying the pressure on Nava. What he needs to do is add a little bit more jabs, a little bit more movement. Right now, his, his punches that he's throwing, he's just throwing a throw right now. He's not necessarily having a game plan behind it. I would like to see him throw a little bit more jabs, set it up, and land some punches. Nava right now is getting away. He's being slippery, but using that jab. A minute to go in the second round. Strong start for Carlos Nava. A good chin on Hernandez. That right hand was right on the money. So for him to get up, legs not wobbly, recovered really quickly. Got nailed. Nava. He's, he's lost ten times, nine of those via KO. You can see the way that, I mean, Hernandez has lost nine, been KO nine of his ten losses. And Nava senses something bouncing around in the ring. I mean, when you do work with Sergey Lipinets, the same sparring partner, and also Chon Cepeda sparring with him. That excellent work. He transferred into the ring here in Fort Worth, Texas. Good round for Nava, establishing the distance, establishing the range, and staking to the game plan, using that jab to keep him away. And setting up that right hand that, like I said, Hernandez would fall in eventually. Good step back and good right hand right on the chin. Pelotifo was reaching and was off balance. Shot hurt him, 
but he got up quickly, recovered fast, and finished out the round strong. It's that beautiful right hand by Hernandez. He leaned back right into the ropes, used the ropes to his advantage, sprung back with that right hand and knocked Hernandez down. And if Nava keeps doing that, he's going to knock him down again if he keeps stepping back as that right hand. With someone falling forward with that pressure and falls in, they're going to meet the shots. Headed to the third round. Tigres del Norte, half of the half is jamming inside Dickey's Arena. Main event tonight, Virgil Ortiz Jr. Perfect. 18 and 0 with 18 KOs with a streak continue. He takes on the British fighter, Michael McKinson, also undefeated. That'll be later on tonight on the zone. Good left hook to the body by Nava, setting it up with that left hook up top. Good straight shots and that hook up top. With someone like Hernandez who likes to just come forward and wants to throw the throw, Nava needs to throw a little bit more feints to kind of even make the openings easier. He's not necessarily having trouble opening up Hernandez, but there's a lot of things you can do to make a fight easier. And there goes Nava <laughs> attacking the body. Yeah, nothing's easy about that. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're eating punches. Against the ropes is Hernandez, who said he had a fight last year, but BoxRec shows that he only, his last official fight was in 2020. He's been stopped his last three times. He's now 36, getting up in age. Just a tough Mexican fighter that'll give you rounds in battle. And that's what we have here on the undercards. Young prospects having to get past these journeymen that are crafty. That are slippery, that are, uh, you know, you fought this, that are, they're not dirty, but they're ish enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dirty ish. It's just tactics that you know how to get away with to make the other fighter uncomfortable. When something's going their way, you got to do what you have to do within the clean limits, obviously, yeah. uh, to make them uncomfortable. But that's what you as a young prospect have to deal with, right? Because you have to learn how to not fall into that trap, how not to get frustrated with them. Absolutely, yeah. You, you do that, they do that to pretty much where you're out of your game plan. Get get in your head, frustrate you, so you start complaining to the refs, or you start pretty much fighting their fight. And we've seen plenty of prospects who get overconfident because they're thinking, ah, look at that record. And then all that, those uh, journeymen need is that one night, that one afternoon where a kid overlooks you, and boom, they get you. And next thing you know, a split decision. Ask uh, my journeyman favorite, Diolo Gein. He knows all about that. Good right hand by Nava. And he keeps measuring with that jab. Whenever he's on the ropes, he's pretty he's pretty stagnant. Yeah. And he finds something as Hernandez got hit, and now he's asking him to bring it. That's uh, <laughs> that's, that's brave of him. Yes, he's not it is. Back. You can't ask someone to come back in if you're not throwing back. And he's leaning against the ropes. Hernandez is hurt. He's game. A lot of heart. Man is breathing heavy here in the third round. Now a little stick of the tongue, a little Jordan-esque. <laughs> Feeling very confident as we're done with three. A little blood coming out of the nose of Hernandez as he was sitting on the ropes being tagged by Nava. I'd like to see him move his head a little bit more, have a little bit more movement. Couple of shots by Nava just didn't get didn't get to land. Good right hand by Hernandez that landed. Nava's got to be careful with also falling in with his own shots. He, his his guard stays pretty low. A beautiful right hand. Whenever Hernandez is on the ropes, Nava is taking advantage, full advantage, using that jab, letting his combinations go, bringing down the uppercut and that left hook. And Hernandez doesn't necessarily have the best balance either. He's kind of just flopping around anytime. Nava throws that hook. It just knocks Hernandez off balance. And he needs to have a stronger base and move, and, and he definitely needs to fight back. He's showing a lot of heart. He's tough, but we need to see a little bit more action out of Hernandez. Head to the fourth round. Bet the Durant, Alex Rincon. Main event tonight is Virgil Ortiz against Michael McKinson. Two more fights here on YouTube. Coming up next, Alex Martin against Hank Lundy. And then Kid Austin, Floyd Schofield, who's 10-0, making his Golden Boy debut 
against El Gato Guerrero. That's coming your way. And on the zone, it will be Beck against Sladan Yanyanin, Uzbekistan against Slovenia. Maurice Hooker against Blair Cobbs, Marlena Sparza, Eva Guzman, and then Virgil and McKinson. Fourth Good round, one. and that's it. Jumping in, and the fight has been stopped. The referee saves Rodolfo Hernandez for more punishment as Carlos Nava, a fourth round stoppage. He's now 9 0, oh, six KOs. For the fighter at a brick house boxing in Southern California. He looked good. He was impressive from the opening bell, Alex Rincon. And Nava was staying to the game plan, staying disciplined, laying all the combinations he really wanted to land to whenever Hernandez stayed on the ropes. But that's a good stoppage by the ref. Hernandez wasn't really coming back to throw. He wasn't fighting back. And even though he didn't look too hurt, it's just about the punishment that builds up over time. And good stoppage by the ref. Yeah, it was a matter of time. And Hernandez... You know, he's a vet. He's been there before, but you see the swelling on the eyes. Had that happen. Had him fought it uh, almost two years. And, but very game. Guys like him, hats off, respect to him. His trainer, Hugo Partida, is a man who's been there before. He fought Jojo and Camarón before in his days. But Nava, not big excitement out of him, but you know the relief of finally fighting, yeah. getting it out of your system. Getting out of your system and getting the job done. And here's some of the highlights. That beautiful right hand, best punch of the night for Nava. And again, he was just letting out those combinations. Hernandez didn't make it easy on himself by staying on the ropes and not throwing back and kept kind of dropping his head down and turning away. And there goes the off balance that I was telling you, Beto, that he just kept moving around, wasn't very set, standing up tall, and that's going to affect you. If you're standing up tall on defense, not going to end well. And it ends in the fourth round. 36 seconds of the fourth round for Carlos Nava out of Pasadena, Texas, who improves the 9 and 0, 6 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time comes to you 36 seconds. Round number four, as our referee Neil Young waves this contest to a halt to the winner by TKO and still undefeated from Pasadena, Texas, Carlos Quiles Nava. All right, good for him. Uh, talk to him briefly. Not an outspoken guy, very soft spoken is Carlos Nava, but. You finally, you do see the smile that, ah, I got the win. That must be a great feeling for him. Yeah, great feeling. And as a fighter, I'll tell you, it's, yeah, I got the win, but, man, it's time to go eat. <laughs> <laughs> like, you eat healthy after the weigh-in. But now it's like, all right, let me get a dog. Let me get some junk food, right? Let me get some, uh, that yeah. Texas brisket, right? Texas brisket. Maybe stop at Bucky's. And then you see Brick Team, Brick House, Julian Chua, Daniel Suh. Then you see the highlights from it. And that was that right hand that got him, Rincon. Yeah, that right hand, it was, just, it, was, it was bound to land, and it landed flush. Hernandez kept coming in, a little desperate with the shots, throwing the throw. But Nava looked great. It wasn't necessarily an exciting performance, but it was a very disciplined one, and it, he, did, he got the job done and looked good doing it. Uppercuts landed, came out. Hernandez, tough, tough guy. Gave him that resistance, but it didn't last long as... Nava came in in the fourth, attacked, pounced, and the referee, Neil Young, decided he had seen enough punishment. Saved the fighter for another day as Carlos Nava gets his hand raised by the 36-second fourth round stoppage here in Fort Worth, Texas. All right, so far, Rohan Polanco, the Dominican Republic, a KO. That was in the second. Figo Ramirez fighting in the U.S. for the first time. Dallas, 19-year-old, goes the distance, gets the victory. Nava. The stoppage coming up next, Alex Martin against Hank Lundy. Then Kid Austin, Floyd Schofield against Rodrigo Gato Guerrero, our last bout here on YouTube. And then at 8 o'clock Central Time, the zone takes over, working our way towards Virgil Ortiz against Michael McKinson. Also on that card, Maurice Hooker, Blair Cobbs, but the co-feature is 2012 Olympian, the WBA, the WBC, and the ring flyweight champion. That is Marlena Sparza as she sat down with the Golden Boy cameras.
Welcome to Golden Boy Insider. I'm your host, Bethel Duran. We take you behind the scenes with the fighters. You know the deal. She's been on the show numerous times, and every time we talk to her, there's always something new about her. And the last thing you want to do with Marlena Sparza is talk about boxing because that's not who she is. She's a boxer. She's a world champion. She's a mother. I mean, you do a lot of things, but at the end of the day, you're your own person. All right, Marlene, ready? Let me get the bad question yes. out of the way. How was camp? Uh, <laughs> right? Before we talk about being a real human yeah, being. Exactly. Um, no, I don't no, care I about camp. You know that. All right, let's go. On the Insider it Show. It was good. It was good. It, yeah, was. it was great. It was the best. Uh, you're in the best shape of your life. It was the best camp in my entire life. Exactly. I'm in the best shape of my life. Um, everybody's focused. Everybody's ready. And that's how it usually rolls. Yeah. <laughs> You're so good to play around with that. It's good. You get going. Uh, when you look at your fights and all that other stuff and you start figuring things out, this is the first time where you get to fight in Texas with the Ring Magazine belt, right? The special belt, the one that means the most significance, right? Correct. Uh, every belt has its, like, huge thing because you, uh, you work for it, you fight for it. But, obviously, with the Ring belt, it's going to be the first time I, I'm fighting with it. Um, I'm in the top 10 now, yeah. um, and on top of it all, it's going to be in Texas. I really don't want to leave Texas, uh, like, again, <laughs> to be honest with you. It's, uh, it, it's been good no matter if it's in Dallas, San Antonio, El Paso. Um, it's always uh, feels like home. All right. Now, before we got going, I had all these questions ready for Marlene. And then I, you were telling me, though, that you have a special development coming out with Nike. And this isn't a commercial or an ad or anything like that. I just found this fascinating because, you know, I told you I used to cover basketball and baseball. So when an athlete says, oh, I'm going to get my own shoe, it's a big deal, especially in the basketball world. But you have your own female boxing boot in the process of being ha making? Correct. So um, I, when I first signed with Nike, which was about 2009, they were asking me about boots. They mold your foot, you know, just stuff like that. And they're used to everybody. But they only had Pacquiao at the time. And I was their first female. Well, they were showing me boots, like, what do I want, whatever. Not to make a boot for me, but just to have boots. And I said, oh, yeah, but you have to order them in a size, whatever. I can't even remember what my size is anymore for uh, the male shoe. But they were like, we don't have women's shoes. I said, no. And they were like, nobody does? I said, no. All women, all girls order men's sizes. And they just were like, what? So they made me my own shoe at the time that wasn't supposed to be mass produced or anything. Um, put my logo on it, uh, my initials. They call It's called the, the Hyper Jab, right? Um, it was, and then I also have another one with a little bit of difference that's called the Bolo. Do we need no, no, you're good. Okay, it's called the bolo. It's called uh, the bolo, right? Um, and when everything started to pick up like crazy, they were like, you know, we're not into gear like gloves, but we're we're shoes. So uh, we really want to look into uh, mass producing shoes that girls can order in their size, the way it should be. And we want your boot. Uh, to be the boot. Yeah, because I've called your fights and I always liked them. Like, well, her boots are cool and you've always had the logo on there. I thought those were just like you, you know, like a sticker putting it on or anything like that. But I didn't know that they were for the Marlene shoes. Yeah, and we demoed a lot. That's cool. A lot. Um, I, uh, a few of the guys have a, uh, can't mention their names, don't want to, don't want to be mean, uh, but did take a little bit off my boot just for their special boot. Um, and then I kept demoing, kept changing things, making sure that everything was right. And uh, because the career, the pros and everything kind of goes. Yeah. One thing, once I got my uh, second world title, uh, they said, okay, uh, I, think, I think we're uh, ready to go ahead and, and do this, especially the way women's boxing and little yeah. girls are picking up. It's, they're getting so many orders. And to not, Nike understands that to not l have women being able to order in their own shoe size is something that, um, you know, they're not supporting. Hey, good luck to you Saturday. <laughs> Thank you. This was really cool with another edition of Golden Boy Insider. Make sure you subscribe. I'm your host, Bethel Duran.
comes straight in. And I don't know if he's getting up from that one. Looks like both guys are double parked here. Oh, oh right hand drops. Rodas, a huge right hand from the 18-year-old Virgil Ortiz early on in his pro debut. And now, fight fans, we are set for our 10-round super lightweight attraction. Introducing to you first, ready to make his ring walk, fighting out of the blue corner from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, here is Hammerin' Hank Lundy! All right, the given name? Henry. That's the given name. Everybody knows him as Hammerin' Hank Lundy coming out of Philadelphia, PA, 38 years old. Feeling in some type of way. He's in the zone. Got that smile on the face. He's walking in very, very confident. Thirty-one, ten and one. Coming into Mike Knox, run the city. Yes, I shazammed it. I'm not even gonna <laughs> pretend like I know it. I, lo I love just uh, the entrance these guys come into. Or act like you know the lyrics. You know what? When you have a teenager, you got to pretend like you know what the song it is, right? <laughs> yeah, I know that. You don't want to be the old man in there. Hey, but Hammer and Hank Lundy, don't sleep. He's always dangerous. If he's in the right mindset. And now ready to make his ring walk, his opponent hailing from Chicago, Illinois. Here is Alex Chi-Town Heat Martin. Hey, Chi-Town Heat, Alex Martin. Okay. You now you got the Chicago Stars. Got the red and black, the Bulls colors. He's a huge NBA fan. You talk about the Bulls all day long with him. I want to talk about is the dollar or this is the dollar on his forehead right the now. Dollar on his forehead. Cunado number two walking him in. I gotta ask Cunado Mando, what's up with that? I'll, you know, we go back in the locker room. We talk to guys. Hey, anything special on your trunks? Now I gotta start asking. Are you wearing a mask when you come out? Now, are you gonna have any kind of money on your face <laughs> when you come out the next time I talk to Alex Martin? Coming into number one by Nelly. That's probably why. Yeah. I haven't heard a Nelly interest in a while. Okay. I haven't heard a Nelly song in a while. 33-year-old <laughs> <laughs> Alex Martin. Hey, Bobby. And all boxing fans, we are set for our next preliminary bout of the evening. And it's live on Golden Boy Fight Night on YouTube. This next contest is scheduled for 10 rounds and the super lightweight division. And it's presented to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. Your three judges scoring this contest at ringside are Robert Chapa, Hector Gonzalez, and David Iacobucci. And our referee in charge at the sound of the bell, Lawrence Cole. Introducing to you first tonight, fighting out of the blue corner, standing with Aaron Ford, wearing black with silver. He officially weighed in 138.4 pounds. His professional record consists of 42 bouts, 31 victories, 14 wins coming to you by way of knockout, 10 defeats with one draw. Introducing to you the former multi-time title holder, hailing from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, here is Hammerin. Hank Lundy! And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, standing with trainer Joe Zagarino. Tonight wearing black, trimmed with red and green. He officially weighed in 140 pounds. 
Tonight, he steps into this contest with an outstanding record of 21 bouts, 17 victories, six wins coming to you by way of knockout and only four defeats. Here is the former WBC Continental America's super lightweight champion, and tonight dedicating his fight to the memory of his brother, William Martin. Here from Chicago, Illinois, Alex Chi-Town Heat Martin! Come on, Alex. All right, your trunks are a little bit high. I'm not gonna call them right on the line, all right? Because everybody went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands, check shots all times, touch them up. Good luck to both y'all. Lawrence Cole, the third man in the ring. We are ready to go. Alex Martin, Hank Lundy, Bethel Duran, and Alex Rincon on the microphone for you. 10 and 0, 7 KO, Golden Boy Prospect. Rincon doing a great job here breaking down these fights. So we asked, why do you have a dollar on his forehead? And I said, Bobby Diaz, our excellent researcher, stage manager here, over to the corner to find out. He said he had a dollar on his head, did Alex Martin? in honor of his brother, Will, who passed away last week. Everybody called him Dollar Bill, so he wore a dollar bill on his forehead to his brother. Alex Martin fighting with a heavy heart. A week ago, his brother passed away. He was, uh, Will was his biggest fan slash critic, who he said kept it 100. They'd argue with each other all the time. So he's fighting with a heavy heart today, but he said this is boxing. That this is what you have to do that his brother would tell him, you gotta go. His brother suffered from seizures at the age of 30. So condolences to the Martin family in Chicago as your son is now fighting as a southpaw here against Hank Lundy. And Alex Martin, his life and career has changed over the last couple of years. A few years ago, he took on Golden Boy prospect, El Matador Hernandez, who was undefeated from Chihuahua and beat him. He was the B-side, changed it up turned it around, Roberto Diaz brought him back again, and now he's fighting on the A side as Golden Boy shows. He recently fought Michael McKinson on a couple of days notice, and Martin goes down as Hank Lundy, trying to change his career around, drops Alex Martin here in the first. He's gotta be careful with those overhands that Lundy just landed. His uh, Philly shell, that's what I don't really like about the Philly shell, it exposes those over the hand, over the hand shots. If you don't know how to work it right, it's a dangerous position to be, especially against uh, same stances. Lundy's yep. bringing that left hand over the top. He dips down, and he's dipping down into the the, uh, the fire of uh, that overhand by Lundy. Uh, I said in the opening, Hank Lundy could be dangerous if he's in the right mindset. He looks like he's got the right mindset. These two camps were drawing back and forth at each other at early licensing on Thursday. A uh, left hand landed by Alex Martin. So good opening round here. And I don't necessarily see Martin landing shots that could potentially put out Lundy in that fashion. I could be wrong, but with the knockout ratio that he has on his record, he's in a sting, Lundy, but I don't see him putting him out like that. But he's doing a good job of keeping that jab out and landing that left hand. He just has to be very careful on defense when it comes to dipping down into that line of fire of that overhand. Stay calm, Hank. And to touch on what you said earlier, Beto, I, I've been in the ring a week and a half, almost two weeks after losing my, my coach, Boogaloo, rest in peace to Bernard Roach. It's, it's, it's a tough thing to be in there. It, it, your mind, me, and my own experience, I don't necessarily think of that, but losing a brother, losing a sibling, someone that's actually blood related, it's something that could be lingering in your head. And Without a doubt, and without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, you, you, that's something that's hard, so you gotta commend Alex Martin for that coming into this fight. Facing a tough opponent, it'd be one thing like you're coming in facing someone that's, uh, you just lost, you know, you lost someone that you loved and you come in with someone who just came here to lose. Lundy is game. He dropped Martin in this first round. And it's a dangerous fighter. Look, look at some of the knockdowns from that first round. Beautiful overhand by Lundy. That caught Martin, kind of shook him up a little bit, threw some, more shots to kind of knock him out of balance. Didn't necessarily touch him, but it grazed him, but enough for a knockdown. And this is what I'm saying, Beto, he's a little out of balance, leaning on that back leg. If your legs aren't, you don't have your legs under you and you start to lean on that back leg, you're gonna fall down. And this is that beautiful left hand by 
by Martin that he needs to continue, continuously throw. Set it up with that jab, throw that left hand down the middle, and just box. That's Alex Martin, as I was mentioning. His career changed when he took care of Luis Hernandez in 2021. But his last fight was against Michael McKinson in March at the Galen Center. He went up two weight classes. He got called on two days notice. He took the fight, saved the card. That was when Virgil Ortiz was then able to fight in the main event. And here he is back at his normal weight, at 140. And I was actually on that card, but though uh, Martin looked good. He, yep. he, he stood his ground for someone coming in almost in a day's notice. Yep. I was actually there with when those things were going on with the calls and figuring out who needs to come up and take this fight. And Martin did it. He, they flew him in from Chicago. And he came, he fought, and he stood his ground. And he, he looked good for some. You have nothing to lose at that point. You come in, you move yep. up and wait. Whenever McKinson is fighting someone like Virgil Ortiz, he did his job. Yeah. And Hank Lundy with Aaron Ford, Danny Davis in his corner. Dominic Walton goes back to Orthodox. He's in the black trunks. Lost his last two fights. He was stopped by Robbie Davis, Robbie Davies in Liverpool in 2021. And then he lost to Chon Cepeda in er earlier year of earlier part of that year. A Philly fighter extreme. Lost to Bud Crawford. He got knocked out by him back in 2016. I mean, you look at who Hank fought. Uh, Thomas Delorme, Mauricio Herrera, Victor Posto, Ray Beltran. Oh, a man who turned pro in 2006, Hank Lundy. Fought all over the East Coast, Providence, Nantucket, the National Guard Armory in Philadelphia. Good left hand by, by Martin right at the belt line. And of course, if you're gonna mention anybody from Philly, if you're gonna fight your way out, you've been to the Blue Horizon, legendary Blue Horizon in Philadelphia. Shout out to Raging Babe. Right now, Beto, they're trying to do the battle of that front foot right now, Southpaw with the right hander. Lundy's trying to get that foot on the outside and he's looking for that right hand. Martin needs to circle a little bit more to his right side. Lundy's right now, he's in control of, of moving Martin into that right side, moving him to that right hand, which he wants to land, he's looking for. He's just being patient, he's looking for the opening. Martin needs to keep that jab out. Oh. So Charles Smith watching us, real crunk, Jim. Manuel Stewart School of, Manuel uh, Stewart Champions of Tomorrow Foundation. Checking in, it's, uh, these are the veterans going at it. Which way is their career gonna go as the second round winds down? Oh, got to pretend here. Got to be careful with that head, but opposite stance is rushing in. It's good back and forth action from Lundy and Martin going back and forth. Lundy. Not laying back, he's coming in with power shots, trying to land that left hand again on Martin. Martin doing a good job of using that jab, keeping him at bay. But again, needs to be careful with his, with his guard. He's dropping down, dipping down, which is susceptible for that overhand left that Lundy landed that first round for knockdown. We're here pretty close to the corner of Lundy, his coach telling him, don't wait, apply pressure combinations and to turn Alex Martin. So far from seeing that battle that front foot, Lundy's a little bit more in control, rotating Martin to whichever direction he wants him to move. We head to the third round, Gail Falkenthal in San Diego checking in with New York fights. And the timeline, going back and forth, Marquise Johns, like, wait, Hank Lundy time? Yes it is, Hank Lundy scoring a first round knockdown. This is where, you know, the Tim Book sale of the world, the, the hardcore fans, right? I know this guy, he might be past his prime. He might be the beast right now, but you never know what you're going to get when you're locked in. And I was talking with the corner of Hank Lundy. They were telling me, you know, a couple, his last few fights, no secret that he took fights that he shouldn't have taken without a real camp. For this one, had enough time, had enough notice, had enough rest, had enough break, that when you're locked in and you have a camp instead of, 
Oh, I got two weeks? Okay, I'll do it. Different story, isn't it? And you can definitely tell. You, you see it with his performance right now. He's sharp. He's looking back. He's very twitchy right now. And with that first round knockdown, definitely impressed with the knockdown. Martin, the A-side fighter in this fight with that overhand left hand. Martin landing a good left hand of his own on Lundy. A little too relaxed, dropping his hands. And sometimes that's what it takes, Beto. Sometimes if someone just relaxes just one second, that one punch can change the fight. But like I said, I don't think Martin has that 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 power where you can pretty much yeah. end it. 17 wins for Martin, six of them being stoppages. And the last time that Alex Martin stopped somebody, you got to go way back in the box rack to find it. He goes the distance. This was scheduled for 10, and I prepared for 10 rounds between these two. And this is one of the fights that the words a chess match. They both are adapting so far. Already in this third round, I've already seen both of them trying to make different changes into their game plan. You see Lundy switching his stance up. Last round, he was staying a little bit more right-handed. He went back to southpaw. Martin, not really much of a switcher. He's sticking to his southpaw stance. Yeah, the last time that Martin did get the stoppage was 2014 at the UIC Pavilion in Chicago. <laughs> I was actually there that night calling Ronnie Rios against Andrew Cancio, a show that we did for Golden Boy back in the day when we were on Fox. I was one was the first bout of the night. It was myself and uh, Doug Fisher and Jessica Rosales on the broadcast. So he wasn't even on the TV part. And look at how his career has changed now. And while you were calling that fight, Beto, I was freshly out of high school. There you go. <laughs> so I was, that was a while back. It's going to be a tactical fight. they got to figure each other out. And Lundy going from orthodox to southpaw, giving them the different looks. Coming up next is going to be Kid Austin, Floyd Schofield taking on Gato Guerrero. Then the main event tonight, Virgil Ortiz against Michael McKinson. That'll be on the zone. So that's what I'm talking about, his, his stance, uh, Beto, that he's, he's dipping down too much. And that's putting him in position to get caught in a dangerous angle. Because he's down, he doesn't see these punches coming. He's dipping down and he's using his per peripheral vision. Martin is in a position where he's going to get hurt if he keeps doing that. So he needs to stop dipping so much. Martin needs to stop dipping, stand a little bit more straight up, and turn the opposite way. And there's Martin with the good left hand pulling back. Coming up short, Lundy was short on that overhand. Martin's got to be careful if he pulls straight out. If they're in opposite stances, Martin needs to put that foot on the outside and turn him just like he did right there. He turned him back on the little jab, and it keeps him at bay, and it resets Lundy's offense. But whenever they're the same stances, he keeps dropping down. Lundy can bring that overhand and bring that right uppercut. But if they're opposite stances, Lundy's making him dip down to his left side. Martin likes to lean back on his left leg. If Lundy brings that jab over the top or left hook, brings that right, he sweeps that right hand from the, from the bottom, he can catch Martin. But so far, he hasn't caught him yet. He's definitely setting it up, though. That's the voice of Alex Rincon. If you just joining us right now, 10 0, going the boy prospect, doing a great job on the mic here. In Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. And here's Lundy in that southpaw stance. He's going to do that. He's going to give that different look. You mentioned you know, how a fight can change your life. And when he beat Luis Ramos, he was brought back to fight another Golden Boy fighter. That was Alex Martin. And he beat Jose Ruiz at the Star in Frisco in 2021. And it's like, dude, if we're using you as an opponent and you're beating our guys, let's keep on using you now as the A side. At that time, when he fought Angel Fierro, his corner, Joe Zagarino, told me that they were watching the fight. Martin had no manager, no real trainer. He was going to do things on his own. They reached out to him like, guy, we can help you. I know you're in Chicago, and as Joe said, I'm a kid from uh, Staten Island telling, telling a dude from Chicago who I've never met, come train with me. I can do things for you. And Martin said, I got nothing else to lose. Went out there, and Martin said, I'm the only African-American in the neighborhood where I'm at. <laughs> And it's a life change, but I needed the opportunity, somebody to believe in me. And here he is now on the A side, but he's in tough against Hank Lundy. Finding with a heavy heart. Because he's passing of his late brother, Will. But once you're in the ring, though, it, you got to lock in. You have to lock in. That adrenaline kicks in, and it should 
most of the time it'll leave your mind and that being you have someone in front of you trying to knock your head off so it's going to come out of your head every now and then it might that thought might linger good left hand by martin backing yep. up lundy to the corner but lundy's determined coming forward applying that pressure and you'd be fair to say that he doesn't necessarily feel martin's power he keeps walking forward with his hands down and i think that's throwing off alex martin whenever someone has their hands down and it's a little flashy with their movement it's tough to predict the, sh the shot might come from the bottom, might come up from around, so you don't necessarily want to risk or gamble with your offense because Martin's being a little cautious. He doesn't want to get countered. But he's doing a good job of moving around this round. Martin in the red corner. That's why you see the graphic for red. Lundy in the blue corner. That's why you see the graphic for blue. Lundy in the black trunks. Martin, black with the green trim. And there's that left hand over the top again that Martin has to be careful with. Lundy's setting it up with that right hook. That right hook's bringing him to that left side and he does it again. And a smart fighter catches on to that, sets it up. Right now he threw it about three or four times in a row. Martin should catch on that he's doing that. Lundy, he can set that punch up again in this fight. That's a habit. Whenever you have a fighter sticking to a certain habit, that, that punch can land. You just have to make sure you set it up and don't be predictable with it. <laughs> the court of Hank Lundy feeling pretty good right now. We're right next to Look, here, put your hands up, Recon. Put your hands up. This is us right here. This is where we're at right <laughs> here. So you can hear a lot from the blue corner as Amber Juliana, the ring girl tonight, walking by the blue corner, and they're just yelling at instructions for... Hank Lundy, and they're feeling very confident in that corner. Aaron Ford, the trainer, Danny Davis, working cuts. As they should feel confident. He's doing a good job, even though Lundy, on paper, is coming in as the B-side fighter. It's not looking like that in the ring. On paper, yes, in the ring, he's doing a good job. He's applying the pressure, making Alex Martin uncomfortable. Alex Martin needs to kind of switch things up. He needs to add that left hand to the body, bring it over the top. I haven't necessarily seen him adapt too much. Lenny's adapting a little bit more. Awkward, but it's a great fight. And this is the type of fight you want to see. Yeah, it's back and forth. Here we go. Let's see here. Let me talk to the corner. Let's see here. Hey, Dom, you guys winning? You winning? Yeah. All right, I asked the corner of Hank Lundy if they're winning. They said, yes, we are. They're feeling very confident about themselves. They did get the knockdown early in the fight. As you see, sit, look, it's smooth in the middle of the ring. That's Bernard Hopkins, a newly minted Hall of Famer, watching Philly's Hank Lundy. Here's Chicago's Alex Martin. Martin with the black and green as Martin goes down. Lundy they looking out of the scowl. <laughs> Lundy's face, not real happy with that. That tackle, but that wasn't necessarily a tackle. Martin kind of yeah. dipped in a little low, tripped over his feet. Off balance. You know, Hank Lundy, a little smirk on his face. He's seen everything at the age of 38, back and forth. He knows what's going on. And a guy like Lundy comes in as a B-side, but when you let them hang around, a veteran who has seen so many things, as Lawrence Cole is talking to them. You know, th got fighters like him, let him hang around. The confidence build more and more. Next thing you know, you're down big. Yeah, that confidence build, and it obviously helped him in that first round. That first round knockdown, coming as B-side, he's like, hey, look, you know what? I'm in this fight. First round knockdown, caught with a good shot, hurt Martin, and he's still in this fight right now. And his corner saying that, they're up in points, winning the fight. Martin moving around side to side, rotating to his right side. Good jab. Lundy going with that left hand over the top. That's right now is the key to the to, key to victory for him. Good left hand again over that jab hand. That's the voice of Alex Rincon, 10 and 0, 7 and 0, 7 KOs. Go the boy prospect out of Texas, fighting at. Team, no excuse, doing an excellent job on the mic. This is the first time you've actually done a solo broadcast with me, right? Yeah, solo. Yeah, you've done one other fight with your brother? 
I did one with my brother, and then when actually when my brother fought his last fight, I jumped in for about for, three rounds. Yeah. So this is actually your first real broadcast? Excellent Thank job, you. man. You're doing a great job. And when you impress Mr. Boxing Guru, who used to watch all the fights, uh, <laughs> you you are doing a good job, man. Thank Shout you. out to Thank everybody you. watching this, man. Keep doing it, man. Give me good perspective here, back and forth. I didn't realize it's only your first fight that you've ever done. I mean, I've known you your entire pro career. Yeah. But excellent job, man. Thank you. I have you. I have you to look up to, so you're helping me out. Can't, I can't take all the credit, but I, I'll take about 80% of it. Hey, we're doing all of it, baby. <laughs> as we head to the sixth round, a good fight between Martin and Hank Lundy. <laughs> I like I like Lundy the way he's coming in with this fight. He's coming in just really no respect at all, at, at all. all. And yeah. I like that. I, me personally, I like fighting fighters like that, guys with no respect, because it brings it brings more out of you, especially for Martin what he's going through right now mentally. And there's that that tackle and slip. More of a trip on, on Martin's fault. He's kind of getting up like, man, I shouldn't be on the ground. What happened? And Lundy's looking like, man, get off me. But so far, this is pretty much that kind of can sum up how this fight's been going. They're going in, inside. It's a little rough on the inside. I don't really necessarily see clean punches being landed on the inside. They like to be on that little shell, hands down from a distance. But... Right now, in my opinion, Lundy is the one that's landing more shots when it comes to that left hand over the top. Martin's defense is almost its his own kryptonite going against Lundy. Dickies Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. The main event tonight, Virgil Ortiz Jr., Michael McKinson, two undefeated fighters. The co-feature, Marlon Esparza, Eva Guzman for the WBA, WBC, and ring flyweight titles and Maurice Hooker, Blair Cobbs, they went back and forth. That's going to be 10 rounds in the Super Bowl to weight division and opening up the DAZN broadcast at 8 o'clock Central Time, 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern, will be Uzbekistan's Bektimir Melikuziev, Bek the Bully, against Slavan Yanyanin from Serbia. After this fight right now, you're going to see Kid Austin, Floyd Schofield, who has a lot of hype behind him, taking on Gato Guerrero, a veteran. But right now it's Hank Martin, Hank Martin, Hank Lundy, Alex Martin. The corner of Hank Lundy, I don't know if you guys heard this, they start walking him down, he's losing confidence. And if you look at the face of Lundy, that is a confident dude, Alex Rincon. Yeah, he's got that mean face right now. He's staring his opponent down, and he's looking for openings. Lundy's been applying the pressure the whole fight, and to me, he's the one landing the bigger shots. Like I said, Martin's defense is kind of is pretty much shooting himself in the foot with the way he dips down. His jab has been pretty effective, but there's nothing really behind it besides that left straight. We haven't seen enough from Martin's offense, but Lundy is the one that's right now, in my opinion, should be convincing the judges. And there's that hand down, hands down by Lundy, which you can tell Martin is being hesitant to throw. He knows there's it's a bait. He's trying to bait him in. He wants to counter him. If I was Martin, being a stop on a stop ball, jab for a jab. If you got a good range, slip your head out while you throw that jab. Are you stop ball? Yes. So how do you counter a stop ball? You jab for a jab. You you faint. Lundy wants to land that left hand. Make him bait. Make him think you want to step in and bait that left hand. But if you got to stand straight for that. Martin is dipping over to his left side. Whenever Lundy brings that left hand over the top, he's going to go over and down to his right. His right is Martin's left. Martin's dipping down that way, and that's why he's getting caught with so many left hands. So in my opinion, I think Lundy should stay southpaw the whole fight because that's the punch that's landing the most. But Martin catches Lundy standing straight up, a little too squared, too relaxed. That's when he should take advantage, throw straight shots, keep him off balance and throw, take advantage. Because right now, Martin being defensive isn't doing him a good job. It's not getting the, it's not getting the rounds, in my opinion. Good couple jabs for the closing round for Martin. And a good jab by Lundy. And these type of rounds that are are a little difficult for judges to, to score just because you don't see a lot of clean shots being landed. They come on the inside. They're throwing shots. They're not flush behind the head shots. They clinch on the outside. 
You get some jabs by Martin. You get some left hands over the top by Lundy. So it's a tough, kind of a tough round to score for, for the judges. Martin trying to keep that jab out. And there's that dip I'm telling you about, Beto, that left hand. That's what's been a, pretty much killing Martin. It's, it's, it's affecting him. He's dipping into that left side. And see, Lundy's almost dipping there, and it works for them. So it's that opposite stance, Beto. If they dip into that backhand, you throw your rear hand. If you bring it over the top, it's going to land. Especially in that Philly shell. That jab, that jab hand is dropped. They're dipping down. They have nothing covering over the top unless they roll. As Hank Lundy jumps out of the stool. Hank tweeted this morning, what a blessing to do what I love, all the hard work we're showing tonight. Being my family, entertain the world. We're just getting started. It's hammer time. And he's looking good through six rounds, Alex Rincon. He's looking good. He's looking in shape. He's looking strong and aggressive. And that's what you want. That's what you want from Lundy's camp. Right now they're telling him to keep applying the pressure. And he's landing good shots, barely missed. And that's what I was telling you about. Like, he has to roll. And that, def that defense with the same stance, you need to turn that, that shoulder over. If you don't turn, that left hand is going to land over the top. All right, four-year-old Hank Jr. celebrating a birthday this week. And his father wanted to make sure we got the shout-out in. So happy birthday to you, young man. As Martin and Lundy going back and forth. Lundy's patch on the trunks falling off. As a, he said the tweet, you know, all gas, no brakes, so no <laughs> stitching on that trunk. Right. Hanging on by a thread, literally. And he picks him up. Yeah. It's, put it's, that little flex on him. It's been that kind of fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's been that kind of fight. So, yeah, I drink my milk. I'll pick you up. And it's funny because some of these fighters, they, I don't know, they, they think that that's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm tough. I can pick you up. Well, you know, you just drained your legs a little bit, buddy. So, <laughs> you want, pick me up all day. That's fine with me. And your then he's bouncing right around the middle yeah, of the yeah. ring. <laughs> Bounce around the Hennessy logo. Yeah. Doesn't it just look like Lundy is controlling every aspect? Yeah, he's 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 allowing Martin to pretty much circle, but it's that's the thing you want to do as a fighter. When you have control, you make that other fighter think they're in control. And you just move him. He's moving Martin to that left side and see that he's throwing that left hand over the top. And both of them <laughs> kind of just looking around the ground like, uh, I just turned you. He's like, no, I didn't. A little smirk from both of them. And I don't know if you noticed, but there was a couple times they were talking a little bit back and forth, smirking at each other. Yeah, they're the talking fight. more yeah. and more. And I actually heard Ox Martin's coach, Joe, talking to Lundy's corner before the fight, saying, hey, I talk a lot of smack. Don't be mad at me after the fight. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah, he told him, don't, don't be mad at me after the fight. Don't beat me up. I'm going to talk about smack, just letting you know. Hey, don't take it personal. Might as well pull it. A microphone inside the ring right now. <laughs> right. Their commentary must be good. As Martin rolls with the punch that Landy throws. And this is the part that I'm talking about. They're on the inside, and there's nothing really flush landing. There's there's punches being thrown, but nothing set. And Martin's head's down. Whenever you're in there with especially the same stance, you got to keep that guard up, stay tight, and keep your eyes up. Martin's dipping down too much with his eyes down. Good body shot by Martin. Lundy throwing some <laughs> some hammer fists. And good body work again by Martin with the left overhand. It's a good finish of that round by Martin. That's that's how he needs to finish the rounds. These rounds aren't necessarily convincing. You want to finish these rounds strong. And these type of rounds where you're going back and forth, finish the round strong. You should be able to take it on the judges the judges scorecards. And so far, good good fight. Seeing a lot of action back and forth. A little sloppy and a little squat pickup by Lundy and gives Martin a little flex like, nah, you're a little too light for me. And Martin throwing a good jab, right hook, and pivoting out. He rolled on that one, but he didn't know his distance there. You got to make sure you're in range, out of range whenever Lundy's throwing that left hand. Tell you, as you... Move on in your boxing career. How old are you? 27. You're 27. And you know, you had, you started your career a little bit later because you were hoping to go farther along in the amateur ranks. 
and then you turn pro, then of course the COVID year stopped it and back and forth, and here you are now. But you've been around the gyms, whether it's here in Texas or in no Team No Excuse in DC where you're at, or you know India where you did a camp one time also. The veteran fighters, you learn so much from them, but a guy like Hank Lundy knowing that, hey, if I come in and I, as a B-side, put on a show, there's a potentially another payday because these young fighters need somebody to fight that has a name for you. And right now, Hank Lundy could easily be changing things around for himself. Absolutely, especially promoters and matchmakers, when they see someone with a name like Lundy who's fought and who's been in the ring with Terrence Crawford, fighters of that, of that stature, it's good for them because they, they show like, hey, you know what, this guy's not, he's not necessarily done. He still has a little bit more pep in his step. He still has that switch. He's still hungry, and that's good for Lundy. He's showing that he's still game. He's bringing a lot of resistance to Martin's game plan. And like you said, this is something that can keep going for Lundy. And who knows, he might get the win here, an upset win over Martin. It's, uh, you have, uh, you know, the boxing fans, the hardcore fans, they, you know, some people are like, oh, I see a couple of tweets like, oh, Hank Lundy's fighting, why? And it's like, oh, hey, <laughs> Hank, Fun Hank Lundy's looking good right now. Yeah. Because when you're dedicated and locked in, it's a different world. And you, you know this. You've been around enough fighters where you know when a guy's there as a name to collect a check. Yeah. And when a guy's in there, it's motivated. Yeah. You have those people they call them the cab drivers, the guy who's just the opponent. The guy who will come up, he'll make weight. He'll try to give you that fight, but he's just an opponent. And then there's the guys that are here to fight. Their record might not be great, but styles make fights. A guy might come in here and his style might affect you. And right now I think Martin, in my opinion, is – the better fighter, but tonight Lundy's style is affecting Martin. Uh, Matt Ramirez Sr. in uh, La Mirada says a tweet, Hank Lundy, and then he has the gif of the barbershop scene in Coming to America. <laughs> you know, it's like you, you you have the hardcore fans like Boxing Vitals are uh, talking about it, and it's like, wait a minute. If you're still there, you can do something. Is he going to be a world champion? No. But can he make it difficult for a young prospect who's, who sleeps? Absolutely. When you're locked in. And that's something that is great for those type of fighters. For example, when Rosado stopped back, that allowed him to create a bigger opportunity and get another big fight. Yeah, and he's going to fight on the Canelo card. So there you go. So like, that's proof. Perfect example. A guy like Gabe Rosado, ugly, ugly record. Hart puts on a show, you get fights. Absolutely. He lost to Shane Mosley. Didn't look good in San Antonio, mm -hmm. but he's on the Canelo card fighting another up-and-comer because you just never know. You want to, it's a sport of boxing and talking to matchmakers. And they tell you, yeah, eventually you're going to have to fight the guys who have a name, but don't pose a threat for you. But don't sleep. Exactly. Don't sleep. Because if you do, they will be a threat. And an instant replay, Lundy landing that jab over Martin's jab. is hanging a little too low. And here in the opposite stance, landing that same jab. Martin throwing a one-two, missing. Lundy getting pretty low. Martin ma making the same head movement. Good right hook, but that was more of a slap more than a punch on Martin's end. But so far, this is a fight that's just going back and forth. Beto, this is a fight that they're both being tested. Lundy saying if he still got it. Martin, hey, can you get to that next level? So far, it's a good fight. Close fight, close fight to judge. If you're just joining us right now, that's the voice of Alex Rincon, 10-0 Golden Boy Prospect. Thank you for watching us, wherever you may be this afternoon, this evening. Hank Lundy with the red gloves. We're finding out of the blue corner. Alex Martin, black and green. Out of the red corner. So we're... Here in the ninth round, schedule for 10. Lawrence Cole separates the two. Let me ask the corner again. Uh, you guys waiting still? <laughs> yeah, some hesitation. <laughs> some hesitation. They, they, yeah. Danny Davis comes and says, yeah, but there's some hesitation. But, but you know what? I, I understand why. Yeah. You may think you're winning, but we're in Texas. Neither fighter is from Texas. You don't know which way it's going. You never know what a judge might favor. Exactly. So you got to, as they said in the corner, you got to get these next two 
I, I like that instruction because don't matter that you knocked him down early. Exactly. Don't rest on your laurels. And you can't depend on that knockdown to get you the get you the win. Like you said, they're both not from here. There's no biased judge off of the oh he's here in his hometown. It's tough. It's tough to judge, like I said, and it depends on what judge, what they prefer. Do they yep. like the guy that boxes? Does he like the guy that moves? Is more defensive? Do they like the guy that pr applies pressure, even though he's not landing a lot of clean shots? Lundy is landing his punches. He's applying the pressure. Martin is being a little slippery at times, but. Again, it's all on the judge's preference. Couple jabs with Martin. Throw him at Lundy to get him off his rhythm. And whenever Lundy, you can tell Lundy, whenever he's leaning forward, he's looking for a shot. He's looking for a big shot. Him in that southpaw stance, you know he's going to want to throw that left hand over the top. He's loading it up right now. And there he pulls it right there. But Martin sees it coming. He just needs to keep that jab to keep him at bay, keep that distance. When you use that jab, range is the most important thing in boxing. Keep him away, keep your distance, and see everything. Good double jab by Martin. And he needs to double that jab up some more, add a couple, hey, there it is again. He needs to just keep doubling up that jab. Lundy wants to respond off of one. If you throw that second one, a couple shots, Lundy's not gonna feel comfortable to counter right away. But Martin is doing this a little too late, one round before the last round. Step it up, step it up. It's been Hank Lundy. In my eyes controlling this fight as we head to the 10th and final. And for the ones that don't know what ring generalship at home, ring generalship is the one who controls the ring, who's controlling the fight, controlling the ring, whether it's forward pressure, making the other fighter move in the direction. It's just taking full on control. Lundy, in my eyes, just like you said, Beto, is the one controlling everything. Martin is moving, yeah, he's moving side to side, but Lundy is making him move certain ways, making him think that he's, oh, I got, I got, I know where I want to go, I want to move here and there. But Lundy is making him move that way. He's allowing him to think that. And he's throwing the shots that he needs to throw to catch him. And he's, <laughs> there he is, high talking. <laughs> Spitting over here, too. <laughs> hey, who's he yelling at? <laughs> who's he yelling at, Danny? Who's he yelling at? <laughs> oh, it's this a Philly thing. <laughs> so, the, the, the 10th round, it's a Philly thing, just yelling at everybody? <laughs> oh, we're about to see right now. Dominic Walton, Danny Davis, there before. Appreciate you guys letting us know. I'm like, who's he yelling at? He's just like, who are you looking at? He's like, it's a Philly thing. Just, just keep yelling. All right, so it's a Philly thing. Here we go. Hammering Hank Lundy, who I saw fight against Mauricio Herrera at the old sports arena where they filmed Rocky. And it's a push down. That's Martin a little shimmy. A little ton at him while he's on the ground. Yep. Yeah, he lost to Mauricio Herrera at the sports arena back in 2015. And, uh... Sports Arena was knocked down, and now it's home of LAFC soccer. But that's where they filmed the original Rocky. And Hank taking that Philly attitude here into the 10th round, just yelling at everybody. So you can all get it. I've been to Philly as far before, Beto, and they all come that way. They come in here with no respect. I'm going to come here, and you got to earn your respect with me. My man, I did a fight at the 2300 Club. I earned my respect out of there. <laughs> And Lundy's showing no respect coming forward. And he's here to take that win. A career that started in 2006 for Hank Lundy in Cape Cod in Hyannis. Here he is now in 2022 20, fighting in Fort Worth, Texas. 38-year-old Hank Lundy. Good body work by Martin. But where was that earlier? And you can't be doing that in the last round and thinking that it's going to affect you. You can land a shot late in the round to, to stop them if it's flush, but to break them down, your 10 rounds too late. And I like what I'm seeing out of both of them. They're both coming out knowing that this yeah. is a close fight. They both know, and co both corners sure are telling them 
hey, this, this fight is close. You have to take this last round to win it. Early in the fight, Lundy dropped Barton. I was in the first. Fifty seconds ago in the fight, picks them up again. They fall right. down. It's been that type of uh, that type of fight. Yeah, <laughs> a little WWE action. As Hank went down, Hank taking his time right now to get up. That's that vet move. Because two rounds ago he was jumping up and down uh -huh, like no other. Yeah. I'll pick you up. Knowing the fight's winding down. And uh, I was more like, oh, he's milking the clock here. They stopped the clock now. Lawrence Cole stopped the clock. <laughs> 38 years old. You know, you know what's up. You know what to do. Yeah. Let's look at the replay. Uh, the replay. <laughs> and even Lawrence. Here we go. The, the, the fart. The back in action. Good left hand by Lundy. And two things that does for a fighter. Either drains you or pisses you off. And you come back in there. You want to hurt the guy for Oh, it looked like it upset Suplexing him. Suplexing you down to the ground. And he landed, he landed on the top of his head, so that was pretty dangerous for, for Lundy. Renato Perez smacks it down. The final seconds of the fight. A push down, a slip. That type of fight. And then it'll do it. Ten rounds. They hit gloves in the middle of the ring. But Alex Martin and Hank Lundy go the distance. Ten, how do you say, um, Ten rounds. Ten of, interesting rounds. Yeah, ten rounds of, of I don't know what the two call two veterans <laughs> yeah. two veterans trying to be um yeah the, the two corners like exchange. it was almost like rugby <laughs> so, <laughs> it was almost like rugby yeah it, it, there you go two ten rugged rounds yeah this is uh, as a broadcaster you got to go buy yourself a thesaurus Alex Rincon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll go to the judges scorecards remember. The, Lundy dropping Martin in the first round. It's Christine, Christine in the corner of Alex Martin. Christine's very popular here in, in Texas and really all over the, the, the nation, working with a lot of the Team USA uh, amateurs. For cuts. For cuts, and she's she's a great coach as well. I've known her from the amateurs for years. Got to fight one of her sons in the amateurs. My brother fought one of her sons. And great family, and uh, she just got inducted to the Hall of Fame uh, uh, for women's uh as a coach, so she's she's earned that for a very long time, and it's great to see someone from Texas, you know, working with another corner, uh, someone all the way out in Chicago, and and uh, again, the condolences to the family of the Martin family for their lost uh, their lost loved one. But it was, it was a great fight for Martin mentally to come out here with fight that on, with a heavy heart, fight against a tough opponent like Lundy. All right, so who won? Let's find out for Jeremiah Gallegos. And all fight fans here from Dickey's Arena. From Dickey's Arena, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Hector Gonzalez has this bout 98 to 91. Judge Robert Chapa and David Ayakabuchi both have the bout 97 to 92. To the winner by unanimous decision from Chicago, Illinois, Alex Chi Town Heat Martin. Alex Martin sweeps the cards. Unanimous decision. A, a fight that Alex Rincon, you said it. It was going to be close because of what the judges would favor. So the knockdown early by Hank Lundy. Didn't matter in the judges scorecards and a very emotional Alex Martin uh, with the passing of his brother, Dollar Bill William, earlier this week, fighting with a heavy heart. And you see the respect from Hank Lundy. The two camps went back and forth. They were jawing all week long, but a professional right, in Hank Lundy. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah Gallego says, Alex Martin has something to say. My brother, man, I lost him. I lost him to seizures. He had a seizure last Sunday. My brother had a seizure last Sunday and passed away overnight. Uh, I just want to say R.I.P. to my brother. It was my my best friend, my hero. I just want to say R.I.P. to him. Thank you to Golden Boy for the opportunity. Thank you to Hank Lundy for the opportunity. 
uh, emotional. Alex Martin, tears in his eyes. As he said a few words about his brother, William, who passed away. Condolences to the Martin family on their loss. Four cards, four fights done on our card. One more to go. Floyd Schofield, Kid Austin is the only fight remaining here on the YouTube portion of the broadcast. Eight o'clock Central Time, the zone takes over. So win so far for Polanco, Ramirez, Nava, and Martin. We've had two KOs, two decisions. What will we see in our next fight? Welcome to Golden Boy Insider. I'm your host, Bethel Duran. I just asked him, like, what's your name? He's like, what? I forgot it already. The reason I'm bringing that up is because eventually you're going to hear a lot of noise coming from this young man. 19-year-old, soon to be 20, Floyd Schofield. They call him Kid Austin from Austin, Texas. And he'll be making his Golden Boy debut August 6th at uh, the Dickies Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. On the other card of Virgil Ortiz and Michael McKinson. If you know this on Golden Boy Insider. We ask you all kinds of questions outside of boxing. We're going to get to know this new signee. All right. I said it. What's your name? And you're like, wow, you forgot me. Because we met today, this afternoon. And I'm like, okay, you're going to come on the show. You're going to talk about it. We get to know you. But you have that attitude of, I'm going to make people remember my name, man. Where does that confidence come from, young Floyd? <laughs> the confidence actually comes from, um, well, it wasn't always there. But it actually came from uh, just being able to spar world champions. And after that, like, you know, seeing, you know, that I can hang with them, like, my whole aura changed. Like, I've just become a different oh, person. See, see, I got to teach you how to do this stuff. This is the reason we have Golden <laughs> Boy Insider, because he's over here, like, talking like this. And Larry, our audio guy, is like, hey, man, get the microphone. All right, so this is why we do these shows. He was part of the press conference today. Yes, get sir. the microphone there. Got Hold that a little higher. There you go. Right here. Right there. Yeah, but not, you're not rapping, right? You <laughs> keep right here. You're right there. That's good. It's right there. There okay. you go. And you okay. got to get the microphone, man. Chilling. There you go. Just chilling. There's your camera right there. They call it the one shot. There you go. You have to learn all this stuff. It, this is the stuff that Floyd Mayweather did, Canelo did, Oscar. They all went through this to learn it. And the next yes. thing you know, like, people are like, damn, why are they so good in their interviews? Because they practice. Just like how you spar mm -hmm. and you practice, same exact thing. Nickname is? Kid Austin. Why? Because I'm just a kid in Austin. Um, my dad actually came up with I thought it was corny at first, but, you know, it actually had a ring to it. Mom, man. Oh, my bad. Maybe yell my yelling to what Bernard did my today. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it actually has a ring to it because, you know, I'm just a kid in Austin. Austin, Texas, where you're home. So now you get to fight uh, at Dickies Arena in Fort Worth on a Golden Boy show. Mm -hmm. How did you and Oscar DeLoya meet? He actually DM'd me. and you, Well, the last DM he sent was, um, if you let me manage you, I'll make you a superstar. And, you know, to read that as a 19-year-old, that – that shocked me. Like I said, like I said to everybody, I thought it was a fake account. I had to check the account like three times. And once I found out it was him, I was super excited. You still think it's fake? Oh, no. No, <laughs> like I said, I put on my Instagram, like, this is so surreal right now. Like, this is crazy. Everything I ever dreamed of is coming true. Um, like, I'm just super excited to be here and to be able to sh showcase my skills. It's amazing. Yeah, you do a great job with your social media. You're not an influencer of boxing. You're a legit <laughs> boxer. You got over 100,000 followers. But the shirt you're wearing right now, Dude. sit down, be humble. You make these shirts, and then you sell them, and the proceeds go where? Actually, yeah, to the Children's Hospital. And there's this thing where they build homes for the homeless. Um, like, what is it, like a 3D printer? type thing yeah, it's like a 3d printer they build them for the homeless and you know the homeless get, they get free um housing and whatnot so you know we just make these shirts just you know because it doesn't i don't get money for it so might as well just give well, it you're coming it. out of your own pocket to make the shirts yeah so you might and all proceeds go to the charity yeah you just give it away uh, okay <laughs> i just mentioned before we started yeah you got no money yet man you <laughs> like so you're losing money on the shirts but it's for a great cause mm -hmm. where did that come from because me and my dad was homeless at one point um, I can't remember much, you know, yeah, guys going to have to talk to my dad because, you know, even though we didn't have much, he always made it seem like, you know, I had the best childhood, even with the boxing. Um, we didn't have a lot of money to go to these places. He had to, uh, you know, ask people for money. My dad has a huge ego, so I know how much it took for him to, you know, ask people for money. So that's all because of him, you know. <laughs> so when you say homeless, you you in your car? No, not even in the car. Like, we literally had to walk around with shopping carts and, like, sleep wherever we could sleep, subways. And where else did we have to sleep? The park, like, stuff like that. Yeah. So. How old were you? 
I was a baby. I was like two years old, three years old. My dad had just got custody of me. My dad was actually uh, in the rap game, so uh, he had to actually give that up and get a regular job just to get custody of me. So. Yeah, good luck to you. Nice meeting you, young man. You Floyd too. Schofield, the name you're going to be hearing from more and more on the Golden Boy shows. Thank you for watching Golden Boy Insider. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you follow Kid Austin and help out the charity causes here in the Texas area. Another edition of Golden Boy Insider. I'm about to plan. And now, boxing fans, we are set for our final preliminary attraction of the evening. Eight rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing to you first, ready to make his ring walk, from Mexico, Mexico, here is Rodrigo El Gatito Guerrero. Oh, here you go. Cuñado, number two. And then you got Christian walking in, Gato. Guerrero, Rodrigo's his nickname, his real name, but everybody calls him Gato. A veteran from Ciudad de Mexico. 34 years old. The veteran, he comes in ready to scrap with you. Going up a division, no problem with it. And yeah, shazam it. <laughs> this is funky Mexican rap. What he's coming into. All right, Jeremiah, who's the A side on this? And now, ready to make his ring walk, his opponent fighting out of the red corner from Austin, Texas, Floyd Kid Austin Schofield. Making his golden boy debut, 19-year-old Floyd Schofield. Kid Austin is his nickname. Comes to you by Austin, Texas. All right, Rincon, I don't know who this is, so <laughs> how do you say this? A shot, a shot it? I don't, even, I, I don't even know what that is. This, that's that new rap. I don't. Uh. Oh, oh, look at you, 27-year-old <laughs> saying that's that new rap. I sound like an old man, but hey, yeah. that is a new rap. All right, he's got a beat, though, but this is a friend of uh, his. A shot it. Bring it in. Floyd Schofield. And now, fight fans, we resume the action from inside Tiki's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Live on Golden Boy Fight Night on YouTube. And it is presented to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and sponsored by Hennessy. Never stop, never settle. Odds for tonight's fights are brought to you by Bet Online and by Masculine. It's a mentality. Don't be a man, be the man. This next contest is scheduled for eight rounds at the lightweight division. The three judges scoring this contest at ringside are Javier Alvarez, Robert Chapa, and Hector Gonzalez, and a referee in charge of the action at the sound of the bell, Ruben Perez. Introducing to you first tonight, fighting out of the blue corner, standing with trainer Hugo Partida. Wearing black with the colors of Mexico, he officially weighed in 134.6 pounds. At 42 pounds, his record consists of 26 victories, 16 wins coming to you by way of knockout, 14 defeats with two draws. Desde la ciudad de Mexico, Mexico, here is Rodrigo El Gatito Guerrero. And across the ring stands his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, standing with trainer and father, Floyd Schofield Sr. and the legendary Ronnie Shields. Tonight wearing black with silver, he officially weighed in 133.8 pounds. Tonight he steps into this contest perfect. 10 bouts, 10 victories, eight wins coming to you by way of knockout, no defeats. 
Introducing to you the multi-time lightweight champion fighting out of the Alamo City, San Antonio, Texas, by way of the capital city of the Lone Star State, Austin, Texas, here is the undefeated Floyd Kid Austin Schofield. Okay, I'll give you instructions in the dressing room. Ya te di los instructions en el camerino. I'm on a good, clean fight. Una pelea buena, pelea limpia. Protect yourself and obey instructions at all times. Obey my, obey the tipo de este todo el tiempo. Choco los guantes, choco los guantes. Ruben Perez, the third man in the ring. We are ready to go. Our final bout here on Golden Boy's YouTube. Golden Boy Fight Night, they call it. Beth Durant alongside Golden Boy prospect Alex Rincon as we get ready to go with you. Working our way towards the main event of Virgil Ortiz. That'll be coming up later on this evening on the zone. This was scheduled for eight rounds in the lightweight division. Floyd Schofield, 19 years old. He turned pro. He was 17 here in Texas. Originally from New Jersey. That's where he and his dad have roots. We're living in Georgia. Came to Texas so he could turn pro. He's been fighting the circuit in the Texas area. Recently signed to Golden Boy. So this is his Golden Boy Promotions debut. A big opportunity for the young man. He's locked in. His father, Floyd Schofield Sr., is his trainer. Kid Austin, they call him. And he immediately works the body with those white Everlast gloves. Real sharp shots, too. <laughs> you didn't even see him coming. Real quick, little two shots to the body. And if you keep up with uh, Kid Austin, he's very, very poised. His dad is on top of him when it comes to the technique with the movement. A lot of drill work, too, when it comes to the gym. Oh, and Gato eats a punch. Gato eating more punches here in the opening round. Kid Austin said he's going to come in and put on a show. Well, he immediately switched it up on Gato, who expected more of a fight that was going to go a couple rounds. To borrow a line, it looks like he's double parked. Is Kid Austin. He took those punches well in that trade. He got caught flush with some of those shots. Even in between some of those shots, which are the ones that hurt you the most, in between shots are the ones you don't see coming. But he took those shots really well, even though it was on the ropes. Guerrero showing he's he's a warrior. Yes, he is. Got Tito is moving up. Gato has lost his last eight fights, was stopped in two of those. But he gives young prospects rounds. I don't know if we're going to get that tonight. Because Kid Austin, Floyd Schofield, has that locked-in look. That locked-in look and oh, sharp shots. Oh, man. Got the some swelling on the right eye immediately. And I've seen Kid Austin fight once before. And he's, he's young. He's 19 years old. He's got really good, good things about him with his speed. He's explosive. Good footwork. But as you see right there, he gets a little, a little anxious to land some of those big shots. When you're young and in the pro game, and you get anxious to land those big shots. You're a professional. You want to get those nice knockouts. He has a big following on social media, so he wants to get a good, a good little knockout for the gram. But, but it's about patience, about setting up the shots. And that's part of the reason that why they gave him Gatito Guerrero, a veteran, who at the age of 34 knows how to survive an attack like that. The the onslaught, those that'll roll with it and get into rounds. But solid opening round for Floyd Schofield here at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Good dominant round for, for Floyd, Kid Austin, Schofield. Good dominant round, combinations, flashy shots, and him working the body. On Guerrero, and Guerrero's a little too slow there. But those are the shots I was telling you, Beto. In between shots, the shots that hurt you. So Guerrero showed that he, he's, he has a chin, and he can take Floyd's power so far. But in a, in a fight where it starts to go to distance, your chin gets fatigued, your legs get fatigued, and you might get hurt when that happens again. But I'd like to see a little bit more of a jab set up by 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 Floyd, he's he's going in with big shots. 
Guerrero's style is actually a pretty easy style to catch on to. He's not, he doesn't move a, around awkwardly. He doesn't bum rush you with his head. He's actually pretty stagnant. So Floyd needs to just throw that jab a little bit more, set up the shots, because he doesn't move with quick twitches, Guerrero does. He's balancing on his toes, but he just has a very stagnant style. He doesn't move side to side. He paws down a lot, which as a southpaw like Kid Austin standing right now, you can bring that right hand over the top, right hook or a jab over his shoulder. Floyd Austin, his last two fights have ended via knockout. He had a six-round stoppage in May and a first-round stoppage in February. Austin, born in 2003. Gatito Guerrero turned pro in 2005. So that's the, the difference between these two. As Gato's been used by Golden Boy recently to test their young prospects to see what they got. By Gregory Morales, a Texas fighter. Also Victor Morales. Also Joette Gonzalez over the years. Got a name up there, Victor Chinian back in the day. So Schofield. Step it up in opposition competition wise. Is Gato Guerrero a dangerous fighter who can probably knock him out? No. But is he going to make it ugly for you? That's the game plan for Gato Guerrero. He said, I don't want to trade with him. I don't want to get into a firefight. I want to make him chase me and move around. And right now, Floyd Schofield doing a good job of cutting off the ring. He's cutting off the ring, applying the pressure. I know Guerrero says he wants to chase him, but he's not doing anything. Back. If you want someone to chase you, you have to counter him as he's coming forward, make him cut off the ring to an angle and come back with a shot, yeah. but he's not doing anything offensive-wise offensive to make Kid Austin pay yeah. for going forward. I asked uh, Guerrero, like, what do you see? He said, it's not fuerte. Like, he's strong. And some of those body shots are starting to take a toll now. When Guerrero gets hit, he takes a deep breath. Guerrero in the blue corner. Schofield in the white. Schofield has strength. He has 10 wins, 8 knockouts. So he has oh, a good a nice left hook. left hook. And that's what I'm talking about. Is, is It can be an easier fight. Let him walk into the punches. You don't have to necessarily chase him down. He's slower. He leans forward. Make him come in and counter. You know this, Alex Rincon. Some of those punches that Schofield has landed against other opposition, they've gone down. They would have gone down. They would have gone down, not gotten up, or gotten up, and then got put to sleep. But this guy's tough. Guerrero's tough. He wants to go the distance. He doesn't want to yes. be that opponent that stops and got stuck between the top yeah, two ropes. Yeah, he got stuck between the ropes. <laughs> Trying that's to avoid a punch. That's the worst place to be at. There's Being on the ropes is one thing, but getting stuck on the ropes. Yeah, it's not going to be between them. Yeah. <laughs> or even whenever you throw a punch wide and your arm gets caught on the ropes. See, this right here, that veteran savviness from Gatito Guerrero. Like, hold on, spin him around. <laughs> Frustrate the 19-year-old. Nothing new. Gatito knows his role. He's such a vet, he takes out his own mouthpiece. Yeah. And like you said, he's doing a little veteran move to kind of frustrate Kid Austin. You can see the look in his face like, I want to put you out already. I think Kid Austin's a little surprised that he's going this far, but Guerrero's tough. Good little check hook kind of behind the ear. Kid Austin coming with body shots, but he's, in my, in my eyes, he's getting a little anxious. He's, he's getting a little, I wouldn't say desperate, but he's just getting anxious. He wants to land a big shot already. He knows that he can hurt Guerrero, but he's trying a little too hard to land that big shot. He needs to let it come to him. That left hook that he landed towards the end of the round, he needs to just let Guerrero fall into those shots. Make the fight easier. Work smarter, not harder. As always, thanks to Box Rec Gray from Box Rec providing all kinds of great information for me. That's all I'm able to find out. What's been going on with Floyd Austin? And you know what I found out? That Floyd Austin, because of Box Rec, his second pro fight was at the legendary Big Punch Arena in Tijuana, Mexico. Let me tell you something, Rincon. You haven't called the fight. You called the fight from a, a bar stool at the Big Punch Arena. But that's where Floyd Schofield was at in his second fight, working his way now to a promotional contract with Golden Boy Promotions. 19 years old. He was telling me the story of how he met Oscar DeLoya. At the age of 16, Oscar saw his Instagram where he was working out. Oscar DM'd him and said, hey, young man, continue to work at your craft. Continue, you have some potential. Keep on going in what you're doing. So they've exchanged DMs back and forth. 
You say maybe one day we'll work together. And then last year, Oscar, who followed him on social media, they exchanged back and forth. Boy was sending him videos of what he was doing and his fights, and they kept an eye on him. And here he is now on a Golden Boy show in Fort Worth, Texas. Over 100,000 followers on social media, on Instagram does Floyd Schofield have. But it's not a uh, influencer page. He's a boxer who's putting up boxing content all the time. He said it's mostly his father, Floyd Sr., who runs the page. Hey, understand the marketing of what you got to do. Yeah, people don't realize it's a business. It's a business in, in the pro game. You, it's not it's, it's not just about, oh, well, you, bring, you, you have to bring a following. You got to sell tickets. You got to have people behind you. And Kid Austin does that. He has a big following, has a lot of reels of his of his drills at, in the gym and what he works on, and, and people love it. Yep. Got Ronnie Shields in his corner now. A little flashy uppercut. He tried to do like a little no-look uh, uppercut whenever he, he missed it. Smiled a little bit, but Guerrero throwing some wide shots. Well, Alex, you know this better than anybody else. When you go and you sign as the head of stepping back of Guerrero, and you've been fighting in different shows that are smaller venues, and then you sign and you fight in a big venue on a Golden Boy show for you the first time. What was that like? The, the butterflies must be there. The butterflies are there more. It's just about being anxious to fight. I feel like, in my opinion, going to a fight, big stage or not, it feels the same. When you're in there, it's so tunnel vision. The adrenaline is there. It's almost like a black curtain is around the ring. You yeah, but during anything. the week, it's a little different because you have oh, to do different. press conferences. You have to do interviews. interviews. You have to do everything else. Photo shoots. Yeah. All that. You're not trying to sell tickets anymore. Exactly. And then that's different. I feel like the buildup of the fight is the part that throws people off a little bit more. And that's actually a knockdown oh, by Kid Austin. counted a knockdown as Gatito is complaining about that, puts his hands up. Okay, it happened right in front of us, but it's officially ruled the knockdown here in the third. No, it was a knockdown. It wasn't. What oh, he thinks the he thinks the fight's the round's over. Oh, it was the finals. I did yeah. too. Oh, a little shot that made. Oh, Kidoff a left from Gatito lands. No so Floyd's getting hit a little bit. Yeah. And that's and he shouldn't really be getting hit. He he has springy footwork. He comes out of his range really well. But again, I think it's just his the youth the experience that he needs to have a little bit more in the ring with these type of fighters. He's had opponents, but not necessarily an opponent like Guerrero to really test him and not pretty much stop. But he's throwing good shots of the body, but again, he's getting a little too wide and Guerrero's landing those shots that aren't, aren't hurting him, but they're landing. But regardless of that, Kid Austin still winning the rounds very convincingly. And that there shows a little, he's getting a little too anxious on the shots, but winning the rounds. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily see that as uh. a knockdown. He missed. He touched the shoulder, but again, it's it's the ref, the angle he has and what he sees. And fortunately, that's a knockdown to Guerrero's eyes, but a good thing for Kid Austin. 19-year-old Floyd Kid Austin Schofield. His father is Floyd Sr. It's a, he's not named after Floyd Mayweather. Many people think that. He said it's a family name. His Grandfather was named Floyd. His great grandfather was named Floyd, uh, but his father's the one who picked up the senior name, and there he goes. So he's a junior, uh, but he's a, a interesting story because he said it's just him and his father. His father and f his son is just them two, one back and forth. He said at the age of two, Floyd Senior gained custody of the young man we see in the ring, but his father didn't have the means to provide necessary so they were essentially homeless for a year they would go to the park and play and then hang around that's the park that they were sleeping in at night mm -hmm. uh, for about a year in new york the father senior said he was working trying to save as much money as he can for them to get a spot uh, not asking for handouts he said it was tough and i just tried to provide for his son got him into the sport of boxing it's Floyd Jr. liked other sports. He said it was something about boxing that just got him going. And for more on that, you can go to the Golden Boy Insider page and check out the full interview. And it was uh, really interesting to be conducting the interview because you can see the emotion in the son's face when he's talking about it. He's like, I don't remember this, but my dad told me not to make me feel bad, but to let him know how far we've come. And now they are here fighting in Texas.
And his dad is very, is his mentor. You can see the way his dad just, you know, speaks to him, how he has him in the gym. And I, and I, I've, you know, through his following of his page, like you, you see that. And, and that's a good bond for them to have. A lot of times people feel like that father-son bond isn't, doesn't work in boxing. But, I mean, so far they're, they're doing it and it looks great. They, they connect well. You can tell they're, they're, yeah. they're very level-headed when it comes to their mentality. So, And the he, marketing is there. He, yes. They sell shirts that say, sit down, be humble. All the proceeds go to Children's Hospital and also to help homeless in the Texas area. I was very impressed just coming away talking to him because, you know, Vince, when you have a 19-year-old kid, a big following, it doesn't matter where you're at, whether it's baseball, basketball, football, soccer, kids are going to be usually above and beyond. Like, you should feel yourself if you're that good, if you're a prodigy. Yeah. But this is one of the most humble kids I've met in the sport of boxing. I feel like, again, like I said, that comes a lot from his dad. Not saying that he's not a humble kid, but yeah. his dad, you know, he instills that in him. From, and he's done that from a young age. And obviously knowing those stories of, of struggling before he was even born, him knowing that is something that will humble you. And great combinations landed by Kid Austin in the corner. The oohs and the ahs from the crowd inside Dickie's yeah. arena and finally gets dropped. He was chopping at him. He was chopping at him. And Gatito goes down. Final seconds, will he beat the bell here in the fourth round? Gatito says, I'm fine. I got blood from my mouth, blood from my nose. And he keeps taking out his mouthpiece. That's that veteran move. And he survives the round. Gatito. That one dropped him good. He and right before he fell, that I was just about to say, he's a little out on his feet right now, stumbles on the ropes yeah. right now. He's uh, You can see the look on his eyes whenever he got caught with a shot. He was hurt, and he almost looked. Just completely lost and discouraged, yeah. and that's whenever Kid Austin landed that second shot. Yeah, we're looking at the replays. They're right above us in the corner, and Gatito is really stung right now. And look at the replays. And he was, it was a mount of pressure, but the shots were finally starting to take a toll, Rincon. And that jab that you just saw right now really shook him. You could see it in his eyes, and then that shot right there that brought him down. Guerrero looking a little, dis little stressed, a little stressed out right now with the, the onslaught of, of Kid Austin's pressure and combinations. And, Right now in between rounds, Kiosk's father, Floyd Sr., he looked, he pointed into the other corner and just said, look at him. He's okay. discouraged. He's done. Man, Gatito's right above us, Rincon. His legs are not bad. Yeah, he's, he's still shaking. He, uh, he is tough. I've called a bunch of his fights. This guy is tough as nails. Respect to the Guerrero, the Gatito Guerrero from Mexico City. But right now, as we head to the fifth round, what can Kid Austin do? Can he finish the fight here? If you want to finish it, what do you got to do, Rincon? You got to just apply the pressure. You're walking down. He's going back. Just set up the combinations. There's nothing that you have to force. Just let it come to you. He's hurt right now. He's discouraged. You see it in his eyes. Just walk him down. Cut the ring. Set up the big shot and throw. Another Good big right shot there lands up there. Going upstairs again is Kid Austin. Landing upstairs. Loading up is Austin. Oh, Floyd Schofield, but surviving the onslaught is Gatito Guerrero. Fighting on all heart right now is the Mexican. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he's one tough guy, man. He's just he's Th taking those shots and in between those punches. This isn't his weight class. He usually fights five pounds lighter. But he said, no problem, I'll take this one. And people watching at home and even us seeing here could say, is kid Austin, does Kid Austin have that power or is Guerrero just that tough? Both. Because you can hear the thud ringside as Guerrero takes another deep breath. He's bloody from the mouth, bloody from the eye. Gone down twice in this fight. But you're going to need to have a barrage of punches. This is where you learn something about yourself as you move up the ranks. Right, Rincon? Yeah, definitely. And Kid Austin, I think he'll go back and watch this fight and really look at him being so anxious to land those big shots. You don't necessarily, with this opponent, you don't have to do anything flashy. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just box him, set up your set up your offense with jabs, and land the big shots. That's all it takes. Well, you know this, too. As he moves back, he got stung upstairs. These Mexican journeyman fighters, they can take a shot upstairs. It's the body you got to chop down. And the crowd is yelling, finish it. Got Tito's not cooperating. <laughs> He's not he's not planning on leaving this fight. He wants to stick all the way through the round eight. 
He's got a tremendous amount of heart. Absolutely, un guerrero. Austin with the patience. Kid Austin nickname, Floyd Schofield. The black trunks controlling this fight, snapping the jab. Good jab, good flash, the jab by Kid Austin. Sharp jab, but she needs to just use a little bit more. There's not a lot of side-to-side -side head movement by Guerrero. At and all. That, and, and that's the part I'm talking about. He's getting anxious. He's crowding himself too much with his feet. It's good to have springy footwork like that to get out of range, but whenever you're setting up your offense and you're springing in too much, you're crowding yourself. You're not allowing the big shots to open. And that's really, and I'll, I feel like that's why this fight has gone so far. Left uppercut, good left uppercut by Kid Austin to lift up Guerrero's head. Right there, you can see that bothered his nose. And this is that action that we that's saw it. going totally. Sorry, Rincon, fight is over. Hugo Partida is going to stop the fight. He's telling the commission that is it. He doesn't want any more of his fighter. So Hugo Partida, who is a former fighter, Partida has fought Jojo Diaz in the past. He, a former fighter, is going to protect the veteran Gatito Guerrero. As Guerrero said, I want to keep going. Partida, protecting his fighter, said no, it's over. He tells the commission, ya estuvo. So, Kid Austin, Floyd Schofield, gets the stoppage here on his Golden Boy debut. A lot of respect to El Gatito Guerrero. My goodness, he's tough. He, uh, he came out hard, but I'm, I can't say this enough, though. F Floyd Schofield... Impressive. I liked it. Didn't get the stoppage on the back. He didn't get the KO, but he was tough because he got great work, professional resistance from El Gatito Guerrero. This is something that Kid Austin needs. Uh, he needed someone that will go the distance that is going to have to make him work to get the stoppage. So he's had stoppages, but not to, he, had to, he didn't have to work, work, work to get it. And you know what? I can't say this enough. Sometimes the corner is more brave than the fighter. Absolutely. Hugo Partida excellent job as a trainer recognizing that his fighter was outgunned that Guerrero he's never going to tell you to stop he's never going to tell you to throw in the towel but somebody at one day has to protect the fighter and Gatito Guerrero his corner decides to stop it nothing to be ashamed of a man this is a man who that this is his livelihood he gets stopped but he lives to fight another day Absolutely. because Floyd Schofield at the age of 19 was starting to come on. It could have got ugly. Yeah, the great stoppage by the corner. And like you said, it's it takes a lot. Of, it, it's a brave move to make. The fighter doesn't want to stop because as a fighter, you never want to give up. And he wanted to keep going. But great stoppage by the corner, protecting his fighter. And that's exactly what they needed. So 19-year-old Floyd, Floyd Kid Austin Schofield got the victory. And I, what I like is he got rounds. Is he super impressive right now in his own mind? He will tell you no. He did some good work. He did some good things. But at the age of 19, you, know, uh, you still got the milk behind the ears, right? You got, Absolutely. You got to work with him. And they're going to go back and watch his tape and realize they could have done things different. Yeah. Getting the rounds is very important, Alex Rincon. And there were great things he did, like that knockdown was throwing combinations at the right time. But if you notice, he did that with a good distance. So he can definitely go back, watch this fight, learn from his mistakes, and keep growing in the good in the things that he's doing right. But there's definitely something he can learn. Great performance, though, from Kid Austin. Jeremiah Gallegos, this is inside the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, here from Dickey's Arena, our referee, Ruben Perez, puts a halt to this contest as our fighter can no longer continue this bout. The official time comes to you 10 seconds into round number six to the winner by TKO, and still undefeated, Floyd Kid Austin Schofield. So Floyd Schofield approves the 11-0, his ninth stoppage, the 19-year-old. There you go, Rodrigo Guerrero. You know, you can, uh, I don't even want to check Twitter right now because I know people are going to complain, <laughs> but the kid did well tonight. Uh, let's see the fight card so far. We had five fights coming your way. Don't go anywhere. We are going to talk to Floyd Schofield.
So a victory for Schofield, Alex Martin, Carlos Nava, Figo Ramirez, and Rohan Polanco. At the top of the hour, the zone takes over with Beck the Bully uh, opening up the zone broadcast. But, you know, the Dominican Rohan Polanco opened up the afternoon a second round KO. Figo Ramirez got the decision. Nava, Martin, and Floyd Schofield. So five good fights happen here on the Golden Boy YouTube page. We'll be talking to Floyd Schofield in a couple of moments. And it's been good, so don't go anywhere. Still got the interview to go, but the top of the hour on the zone, they took over. As I. Uh, uh, poquito, sí. ¿Te sientes bien? Oh, <laughs> look at it. Poste hey, respecto a ti, Guerrero, viniendo acá a pelear de la manera que peleaste, como siempre. Gracias, una buena pelea. Hey, pega duro. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Rodrigo Guerrero just came over and talked to us and asking us, hey, how did you see it? He said, hopefully, uh, the next time I'm fighting at 1.30 instead of 1.35. He got the call a couple weeks ago, and he said, yeah, I'll, I'll take on the challenge of fighting at 35, no problem. I asked him if Schofield hit hard. He said, yeah, pretty good for his size. He does hit hard at the age of 19. Joining us now here at ringside. All right, take a breath, man. You just got out of the ring. Breathe yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Finally, I'm hot. My dad puts his jacket on me, man. You can take the jacket <laughs> off, man. If you're uh. Yeah, you just got out of the ring, got the stoppage. 19-year-old Floyd Schofield. We were talking about this on the broadcast, as Alex Rincon, about the Duran and uh, Kid Austin here, yeah. that you had that professional resistance, as Steve Kim told me you would say, mm -hmm. and because this is, dude, you were hitting him hard, but he just wouldn't go down yeah. until the end. That man has a hard head. All credit to him. I appreciate him taking the fight. You know, he's a, he's a veteran. He's classy. He knows how to survive. But at the end of the day, I think his coaches made the smart decision of taking him out the ring. But hats off to him. He was a tough opponent. Yeah, I mean, this this fighter, what do you compare him to, to the last fights you had? This guy came. He didn't come here to lay down. He came yeah. here and brought pressure. Uh -huh. He was a he was a he gave you resistance. Uh -huh. Tough fighter. Yeah. How do you feel like this fight changed you moving forward for your career? I feel like it just showed that like you're not gonna you know knock everybody out because I feel like if his coaches didn't stop it, he would have kept going. Like I don't think he would have you know went down. I think he would have. Uh, finish the fight, you know, but his coach is off the fight. Um, I think it's just like just showing me you're going to have tough opponents. You're going to have opponents that can take your punches. But at the end of the day, you got to adapt to um, to what you got to do. Well, all right, how did you feel? Give yourself a grade here. Uh, to be honest, I don't really grade. I'm going to go back and watch it, see, see what I have to work on. My dad's probably going to, you know, give me all the things I did bad and nothing good, which he's supposed to do. But um. The constructive and, criticism. Yeah, if I have to say I felt I gave myself a, uh, I gave it a B. A B? Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't see you jumping up and down because you did what yeah. you got to do. Yeah. But you know that there were some things that as you evolve in the fight game are going to be completely different too. Yeah, because I seen he was trying to catch that left hook sometimes. He caught it like three times. Um, something I got to work on, picking my hand up. But I'm just so happy to be here. Like, it it's is. amazing. It's an amazing feeling. I think we got highlights for you. Luis, I didn't hear you, but I think we're going to show some highlights of this fight. Yeah. Uh, Floyd Schofield. Yeah, you look good on camera, baby. There I'm you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at some of the highlights. Whatever you see right now, Floyd, just is. Oh, that's not me. Oh, that's not you. Uh, <laughs> no. Rohan Polanco. Uh, that was our opening bout. Good fight for him. Yeah. Practice, yeah, yeah. Pra practice commentating right now. What do you see? Practice commentating. I see the guy, Bell, shouldn't have been in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> nice body shot. Beautiful body work, too. All right, so those were the nights that happened. Floyd Schofield gets the victory for you. We're going to wrap this up. But the last, Floyd, the last word for you. How did you feel fighting on the Golden Boy Show? It felt amazing. It's a dream come true. Like, I never thought I would you know, be here so soon, but I'm here, and I got a job to do, and, you know, move on from here and on. All right, Kid Austin, make sure you follow him on social media. Congratulations. Move on forward. Thank you, And sir. that was the Figo Ramirez in our second bout of the night. Got the victory for him. So, Polanco Figo opened up the show. There it is. And Carlos Nava came in, and he had to stop Rodolfo Hernandez in the fourth round. So, that was our third bout of the night. So Nava got the stoppage, representing Brickhouse Boxing. Fourth round stoppage for Carlos Nava, now 9-0. and And then Alex Martin, Hank Lundy, the veterans, you know, they were jawing during the week. They were in each other's face all week. 
And then when the veterans get in there and they go back and forth, they trade. Lundy knocked down Martin early. Martin fighting with a heavy heart for Pasovich's brother Bill gets the victory. And then in our featured bout here this afternoon, Floyd Schofield had to work for it. I guess the rugged Mexican veteran Gatito Guerrero dropped him at the end. Guerrero's corner decided they had seen enough. Floyd Schofield is now 11-0 with nine KOs. So a good afternoon of boxing here at the Dickies Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Schofield got some charisma, makes his Golden Boy debut, and gets the victory. Back here ringside, Beth Duran alongside Alex Rincon, Golden Boy prospect, who did an amazing job tonight. This I didn't know this. This was your first time broadcasting. You sounded like a vet. What did you like tonight? I love the action that I saw. We saw some stoppages, but we also saw some fights, some resistance from these Golden Boy fighters that were the A side, but we brought they brought some BC B side fighters that gave them resistance. Kid Austin, he went, he didn't go the distance, but he got some resistance from Guerrero. You had Lundy coming in, giving Alex Martin a tough fight, tough close fight, but Martin pulled it off, and obviously the other fighters, Figo getting a stoppage. And it was just a great show for for the Golden Boy fighters. Oh, but it's not over. Top of the hour, the zone takes over. Todd Grisham. Serge Amora, Chris Mannix are going to bring you four fights on the DAZN app with Beck Demir Melikuzi at Beck the Bully taking on Slavon Yanyanin, Maurice Hooker, and Blair Cobbs. They were drawing back and forth. That's going to be a good one. That one's personal. The co-feature with the WBA, WBC, and ring flyweight belts on the line. Marlena Spars, the defense against Venezuela's Eva Guzman. And then the main event, two undefeated fighters. Michael McKinson, ups and minded from Portsmouth, Great Britain. Can he pull it off in Virgil Ortiz's backyard as Virgil Ortiz back in the ring? Grand Prairie, Texas own. He's 18-0, 18 KOs. Will his streak keep going of knocking out every single opponent? We'll see that. Top of the hour on the zone for Luis and everybody in the production truck. Our crew, Bobby D here working ringside. Our lights, our camera, our graphics, everybody that helped out on this broadcast. I'm Bethel Duran. Thank you so much. For watching make sure you subscribe to the golden boy social media accounts make sure you subscribe to the youtube page for my partner alex rincon i'm beth the durant thank you and good night eight o'clock on the zone